Call meeting to order, uh, 6.02 p.m. Um, is Joyce with us? Yep. yep. Okay. We gotta um, remind people why Yeah, I know. We're, we're, I'm not gonna use the actual language, but we are um, going to have roll call vote for every vote taken because uh, we have one person who is um, participating remotely because of geographic challenges. Does that suffice, Brian? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, motion to accept minutes from August 8th. Make motion, accept. Second. Uh, I actually had a comment on something I read there. I just want to make sure I understand it. Okay. Uh, there's something in there where it sounds like um, John is quoted as saying that there's um, I'm busy and trying to get to the right page here. I think it's the uh, second or third page of the minutes, about halfway down the page. Um, and it, it seems to imply that there's no limit on the number of cars that could be in the castaways. And that's, I don't think John said that or meant that, so I'm wondering if there might have been a typo in that. Gosh, this packet is big, Brian. I see the third page in the middle it says, Mr. Yeah, Lewis, there we go. There's no capacity uh, for the parking lot. Clarify that there is no capacity for the parking lot. That's, I don't think what. Right. He, I think I would have caught that if he said that, but <laughs> um, I'm not sure what it was he actually meant. I, just, I didn't want it to go by that you know, there is a, a sufficient capacity. I don't know for sure what it was. I, it's a number close to 50. Um, and I, you know, from a couple meetings back, I know we actually had that in front of us. Hey, but Joyce. I, Joyce, yeah. I, I, just in reading the rest of the of the notes, I'm not sure that. And again, this is a month ago, so I apologize, but I'm not sure I was referring specifically to cars in the parking lot as much as capacity for foot traffic. Because the rest of the the rest of the paragraph oh. reads: most public restaurants have lines outside of the door or along sidewalks of major metropolitan areas. Now, this is on a rural road with residential properties in close proximity. This will require the sufficient security in place to ensure, et cetera, et cetera. So I, th I think I was more referring to no capacity for overflow. For <laughs> overflow, in terms of what do we do with that foot traffic in the in the case of overflow? Okay, all right. No capacity for people in the parking lot. Yeah, it's just the number of people. How, where where do the where do, and this is something that these guys can work out and they can and they can share with us. But what happens if if 500 people want to go there one night. I know that's you guys would love to see that. Um, but then what do you do? Because you can't have people lining up down 510. Right. Um, okay. So there's no, again, thinking back to when I was in my 20s and, and, and standing in the line for a bar in Boston. You, 21. You 21. No, at my, my age, it was 20. Oh. I, I'm dating myself. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, you, you had a, a clear. You just stood back. You know, you stood and you went down Charles Street or whatever it was. Um, that that doesn't exist here. So I think that's what I was referring to, Joyce. But that's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, but but if if you look at my comment before that, I was asking, is it the capacity of the building or the parking lot? No. Yeah. And and it's two different things. Uh, yeah, we, we've got a, we've heard a number for the building of 95, I think, in the parking lot. Well, if you go by what is what is uh, marked there, it was around 60 parking spaces. So and we yeah. nailed that. I, we, I, I we lowered that to, to relitigate it. I right. just wasn't yeah. sure I understood what the comment. Was. But, oh, okay, so going into the official meeting, so I'll second the the motion to pass the minutes. I I would just amend that. That we need, we do need to clarify that capacity after four. After for the number of people in the parking lot. I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, so I've heard a motion and in a second. Uh, all those in favor, voice vote. Joyce. Uh, aye. Fred. Aye. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. Anybody? Going once, going twice, 
So, uh, reimbursement request chapter 90, I believe that would be uh, you, Mr. Bardwell. Partially, I think. Yeah, Brian has some too. This is actually a project request. Um, for chapter 90. I have paperwork for yes. crack ceiling. And Brian, do you have paperwork the for the. Yeah. Um, is this where the arrows are is what I need for signatures for crack ceiling. And Brian has paperwork for a reimbursement for complete streets. Just curious, where are you doing crack ceiling? On um, Haydenville Road. Okay. So we need sign on. And this is complete streets for and what? That is complete streets to for reimbursement on the tier for the tier two privatization plan yeah. to work that FERCOG. That's what FERCOG has already done for us. To get that plan approved. And ask you. Uh, just any work on this? The second one? Um, no. This, no, not that one. Oh, just the... This is all. Right. I got that. So yeah, that's just it? Just that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I got this one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Fred needs to. Fred needs to sign that one. Yeah, yeah it's just two, because you can sign that one. That's our one. Squeaky in there. Yeah, you can even go on. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Appointments. Bob O'Bear. I don't see Bob anywhere. No, I thought he was coming. Okay. Uh, if Bob shows up, we will go back to him at a convenient <coughs> time in the in the meeting. Uh, but I, I guess technically he doesn't need to be here for this. So what's just? Oh, he doesn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. Review and vote on a purchase and sale agreement for 219 Christian Lane, lot number one. And also to review and vote on a license agreement for a temporary continued use of athletic field at 219 Christian Lane. Just as a reminder, this is uh, the sale of uh, the lot that the Blue School sits on. And uh, because where the, the lot that the Blue School sits next to, I guess, right? Next to, yeah, behind yeah. the Blue School. Um, but uh, Mr. O'Bear has offered to allow us to continue to use the softball field until he begins uh, whatever construction he has ultimately planned. So actually I, th I think he is supposed to be here tonight. He must be running late. Alright, so we'll pass on that and go to uh, Nicholas Spagnol and Julius Sokol. Discussion on Bloom Market Garden Incorporated plans to cultivate marijuana at 62 Christian Lane. Hey guys. Hello. Yeah. What do we have, Brian? We have these guys. So you're going to talk about plans? We can, uh, just wanted to introduce the project a little bit and uh, just kind of go through where we've been, you know, in this whole, the whole journey on the medical marijuana and even through now. It's been a much longer road than, you know, previous projects we've presented here. So we've been actually permitting sites for that and been trying to, to be in the industry since 2013. Um, we do have a medical company. We received a special permit from the town of Ipswich on August 16th. We have a building in Ipswich under agreement now. Um, hoping to close on, on that as well. We, we have a, a company called Bloom Market Garden. Um, we signed a, an option to purchase 62 Christian Lane, I think back in May. So since that time, we've, we've vetted the project, vetted the price of the land. Um, we've talked to a number of operators who are interested in coming on board with us to just run the farm and run the, the cultivation operation with us. Um, that site will, will serve a few dispensaries, some that we're permitting ourselves and, and some that, that are in play right now. But um, 
the farm itself is it's an interesting operation. I mean, it's it's growing now. It's doing uh, it's doing good business. It's 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 a pretty large scale operation. I think the the conversion from basil to uh, to marijuana. I think retrofitting wise, um, community impact. I, I think it will have minimal effect on, on the neighbors and uh, and just everyone in town. Um, we'd we'd like to discuss host agreement and. Just try to convey how you know how I think it can make sense for everyone. And we're not selling anything on the farm. There's no sales at the farm. We're potentially supplying dispensers that we have and that we own and operate. Um, I think for for us and, and to just make the the deal work and the purchase work, um, we'd like to have a, a flat manufacturing fee as a, instead of a percentage of gross. For us, uh, it, it will help facilitate the transaction and the, the purchase on the farm. Um, so. Um, we, we're engaging our architect now and our engineer should have that part wrapped up within the next couple of days and then over the next 30 days we'll, we'll work on a, a substantial set of site plans and uh, and present but we're just here to talk about the project answer any questions you may you may have and see if there's a way we can work on uh, a host agreement payment together and and drive this home well um, I just have one question but Joyce is our resident expert on host agreements, so I'll yep. pass that to her most. Um, <laughs> well, um, but there's no law in the books in terms of can you grow for retail sales for your own retail sales. Sort of like it's sort sort of like you know that's why they broke up Standard Oil. Um, because they monopolize the entire chain. I don't know the answer to that question, but I, I assume question? you guys have a question. Yeah. Well, well question essentially, that? essentially, there's there's no law, and I, it, I'm just curious. They want you to only can you grow and sell? Your can, own? You, can you can you sell your own? That's actually what they want you to do. The retail only model is pretty hard to survive, right? Yeah. So the way the regs are set up, um, mathematically, how to be vertically integrated, grow your own. You couldn't. You know, purchase from anyone else or wholesale it with the rec it seems they've set up a wholesale market um, but we have our own needs this this will be a vertically integrated company right um, actually the state wants you to take care of yourself first and anything left then you can wholesale but uh, nobody's doing that currently well actually one of the 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 the, 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 the one host we can sign is actually doing that well, they, they want to. They're signing futures. I mean, I mean, not that not group in particular, but most groups yeah. now are just signing like futures contracts to purchase product twelve or twenty four months out. No one's currently yeah. actually in, in started that model. Right. People might yeah. be getting permitted for it. Currently, there's okay. twenty three medical licenses in place, twenty five, yeah. and no one's actually gotten to that point yet. Okay. I'm just talking like what's happening, the landscape of the state now. Also, just to clarify a little bit more, what Nick said. We also have a whole permitting process we have to go through, which is going to include uh, conservation and the ZBA as well. Um, but we want to have the host agreement in place so we can confidently then go and do full plans. It's a big process that will then need the further approval, like I said, of conservation and the ZBA. Okay. So what you're proposing to, to buy that, that parcel at 62 Christian Lane? Correct. That parcel? Yep. And are you going to grow indoors, outdoors, or both? Indoors, we'll, we'll keep everything within the existing site for now. We'd like to explore the opportunity, maybe you know, if there was outdoor. But priorities definitely stick indoors. Um, stick to the same site plan, really, and uh, should be a fairly easy retrofit and, and conversion. Use you know, the same greenhouses that they have. Uh, keep the solar there. Solar absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, is that part of the set? It is, yeah. It's it's part. It's you know, 40 acres, 163,000 square feet of greenhouse. About two acres of solar power, so um, it's it's a fantastic property for this type of operation, and I think it will do well. And the solar power goes a long way as far as being low cost, high quality producer. Um, yeah, it's, it allows us to have a green enterprise right. by having the power. Joyce, what's our host agreement? And I'm sorry, I'm calling you out here. What's our host agreement for that solar? Do you know off the top of your head? It's a, it's, a it's not a host agreement. It's a pilot. Pilot, 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 yeah. agreement, pilot agreement for the solar. I am assuming the pilot would transfer. Nothing would change there. Absolutely. There's no pilot. Right. There's no, no pilot there. That's a private. Solar. Privately owned, right? So, right. So there wouldn't be. I apologize. 
That's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure that's I'm not sure that's the case. I think, I think, there, I think there would be a pilot there. Yeah, I think there is a pilot. Is there a pilot? No. No. There's no pilot at all. Okay. Okay. We never discussed that. Uh, no. Wouldn't come up. We we assess them for personal property. Absolutely. As long as we're getting revenue, that's my concern. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, Joyce, you want to walk these guys through what the the process we took for the host agreement for the one cultivation. <laughs> Facility we have. Well, right, because it was we tried. We did try to set a precedent for obvious reasons on this. So, um, I don't have all the details in front of me. We basically asked for everything we thought we could get, and they agreed. Um, there's a, a, a limit to what the state will allow you to uh, require, uh, which is uh, three percent of the wholesale price in the case of a growth facility. Um, it'd be really hard to figure out what flat rate would replace that. So I, I do think that's going to be trickier. Um, uh, we had all, we asked for a few things extra that the state doesn't require, um, and uh, those people agreed. Um, Get some extra uh, dollars for basically for the schools for education. And I feel like there was one other thing, Brian, I can't remember. It was. It? A charitable donation. donation. A, cha a charitable donation um, uh, to uh, uh, your nonprofits in the town of Wayne. Okay. Um, those are the main things that, you know, where money transferred hands. Um, there were other things in the agreement. That, you know, I'm sure you can get a copy of that. Uh, the one the one that we have already. Um, yeah, I think it, it would be tricky to do with your, I mean, I understand why you might want to do that. Um, but at the same time, I don't really know what a good replacement number for 3% of gross. Or, you know, that's mm -hmm. How would it work, <clears throat> and, and I guess it goes back to my earlier question to you guys. Is the accounting set up where you essentially the, 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 the cultivation will sell to the no, retail? That, that's the problem. That's the problem that other groups right. run into, and that's where the flat fee comes out for vertically in the grid. They're going to realize it's too late. There's a problem with the gross model, especially, I mean, it's just, yeah, they're going to realize it's too late. I mean, you're not yourself. You're just right. There. So you'll get zero. Right. <laughs> Technically. Sale. Well, we, so, we will wholesale some amounts yeah, at the yeah, very yeah. end, but we fail a flat fee. I mean, you can look at what. You know what the farm can produce in theory, and uh, the gross. It, it, you know, a good marijuana business will maybe net twenty or twenty-five percent of its gross. Sometimes the 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 three percent or four percent. You know, the the fees that come out, it ends up taking almost half of the net profit that a, a company would make. So it's, I think that's pretty uh, that's pretty detrimental to the the sale of the the farm. Um, I think a flat fee is 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 pretty simple to. To figure out, and it's something that could be revisited um, in time as well. Joyce, I believe they're for three well, years. I don't have anything to say about that. Um, Find something reasonable to do. 
Okay. Is it is it fair to say that that the board would want to, to see the the host uh, the uh, community outreach meeting before signing the host community agreement? I would imagine so. I think that's probably no. I mean, it's not hard to do a host uh, the outreach meeting, right? It's not like it's there's some insurmountable hurdle. Um, right. It's pretty much notification of a butters and. You guys have probably yeah, gone through it already, so. Show up and chat and yeah. you can come, right? So. Um, Something we have to do anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not going to be action one way or the other, but if that's what you guys want to see, then we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Note the, the okay. size difference, too, I think, is important. I think that was a 10,000 square foot grower, so this facility is 163,000 square feet in total. You know, possibly looking at applying for the top tier license at 100,000 square feet. Um, so, yeah, that's just kind of where our, our process is right now. Is this the only place you plan on growing it? Yeah. Yeah. No. Now, this parcel is connected with the owners own other parcels in town, is that? I believe maybe a few, and they, I know they operate some other farms and, and stuff in town. It's really looking at this one location. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I apologize. I missed the early discussion, but I know that Montague applied a lower percentage fee for growing than for retail on the theory that the profit margin is lower. And I think there's, I'm, I don't remember yeah, what we, look, we did look at money user I don't remember what it was, but it was, it was a percentage no, we did, fee. We, we know what it is. Okay. We did look at their agreement. Thank you. So next steps would be, <clears throat> I mean, two things. Well, if the board would want the, the to see the community outreach meeting first, it would be upon the upon the applicants, future applicants, to to hold that meeting, um, and then maybe at the same time, I don't know. If you want Joyce and I to, if she's willing and I'm willing to continue working like we did with Urban Grown in terms of trying to hammer out an agreement, but to bring back to the board. You guys did an outstanding job, so I would think that you would want to continue that teamwork in perpetuity. <laughs> um, the the um, thank you and me. The the one thing that that I want to make sure is we have is um, the educational piece is a pretty important piece uh, for a variety of reasons that I don't have to explain to many people. Uh, and so, uh, especially with the proximity to the road and the visibility of these greenhouses and the fact that school buses drive by there a couple times a day, um, I, I, just, I just think the educational piece is, is, is pivotal, uh, pivotal above and beyond any revenue that the town may receive. So. Okay, do you guys want to add anything else? Or? Yeah, just to kind of just so we're on the same page, we're going to work on scheduling the Butters slash community meeting. Yeah. Uh, and is it okay if we continue working with Brian and Joyce, talk, negotiating, I guess, in the way the the host agreement? We maybe have Does that have to happen visit. here, I guess, is my question? No. Or? Okay. No. Okay. No. That's she all. can do whatever she wants on her own. Okay. If, if one of us were to join, that's where it gets Got it. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. And then she brings her recommendation to us, and then, and then, then we go through it okay. to the nail. So. Got it. I think we'll, we'll put together a, a, a fair, uh, you know, fair dollar amount, fair flat fee, um, put our best foot forward, and, and hopefully try to figure something out. So. Okay. And then she'll have that. You guys want that fee? Okay. Okay. Great. Good. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Um, since I see we have been joined by um, Mr. Obear, why don't we, and we're ahead of schedule by that, so, um, Bob, you want to come on up? Yes. Yeah, sure. What do we got? Uh, we're here to uh, <coughs> secure a purchase and sale agreement for 219 uh, Christian Lane. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, that's a license. Okay. 
I guess I, I have a question on the license agreement. Uh, and I don't know if it's going to impact the sale or not. Uh, license agreement, we're asking this Joe Bear for the town to continue using the ball fields, whatever. And it says, uh, until such time as construction of residential development fund the property and adjacent property at 219 Christian Lane and adjacent. That means we can continue use until both parcels are developed? Uh, no, it's just continued use until I see a need that I need to disturb the area or <coughs> subject the area to impact. Because right, the majority of the, of the ball field itself is, is on the other parcel, not the parcel Correct. that the school, the, the town owns. Correct. So this is kind of mixing us with, with the other the other parcel. You, know, you, you have to remember the septic system and right, the fields I know, and all but, that but, parcel. So. But it, should it be, the way it's written here, it says both parcels, we can continue using <coughs> until both parcels are developed. I think it should, it should say either, either or. Either or. Right, correct. Okay. I think you're correct. Either Town Council or. drafted this, so this is, this is our document. Because you could say develop one parcel sure. and the other one could be years away, and does that mean we still have use for both for that field? Right. Uh, right. Uh, we're going to get into an argument later yes. about when you want to develop it and, and, or we want to mm -hmm. use it. Yeah. No, I, think so, I think that's a valid point. And, and the, other, the other thing on that. The, the use of that, uh, who's going to maintain it? The town is. The town's going to maintain which? The ball field. The ball field, yeah. yeah. The town will maintain the ball field. Otherwise, he has no reason not to just let it grow up. Well, grow right. Up. Right. 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 I get that. Okay. Well, I didn't, I didn't see that anywhere in here, so I don't know if that's the an understanding we have with them or whether you need to say that in here. So well, I mean, I. I I would argue that it is it goes without saying because he's allowing us to use that field for whatever purpose we need until he needs to do something. Right. And so if we choose not to maintain it, that means that we're saying that the use of it for a softball field isn't our need. I mean that so the the maintenance of it is indicative of the use for it. I, I, I just well, but it's not it's not only the recreational field, I mean, during that time, I, I think our, our, correct me, Keith, our, our uh, highway department mows it. Don't you mow that field all summer and do leaf pickup and whatever you do in the fall? So it's not just maintaining. We don't plow it. No, but not just right. maintaining a ball field. Correct. The way the way it was and handled was this, the frontier was doing fall cleanup plowing their parking lot and we did the spring cleanup and mowed it also summer. Okay, so, so I mean there's no reason in the winter time we the town doesn't need to no, do anything no, for but, that part. But the spring or fall cleanup, is that gonna continue then? As long as we use the ball field? Is that, would be, is that would be my expectation. Is that the agreement yes. we're making here? I, I guess whether it's in, in writing or not, is that what we're agreeing to? That's my expectation. Okay. Well, and it goes a little deeper than that. Not to make it too complex, but if you're developing the building, there's going to be an impact on the parking lot. Exactly. And the parking lot is needed if you're going to use the ball field. It's a, yes, it's very well tied together. Right. I mean, there's just because it, it, I don't know if you've driven by there when there's a soft, is a softball game going on or a softball practice. Yeah. I mean, there's there's ten to twenty cars. I'm probably not going to be able to offer parking for the ball field on the adjacent property, especially if there's an active construction site there. I guess I, I because you would be using the parking lot for correct. storage of yeah. equipment, materials, etc. I guess I, 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 I don't object to having agreements like this, but, but and I, don't, I don't object to your developing both parcels, but I think we need some understanding 
of what's going to happen once you start construction and what does construction mean? Right. Digging up the parking lot or does it mean taking out windows in the building? Uh, right. And how is that going to impact, if any, on the recreational use of either parcel? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we could come to an understanding, I, I think today or would be help us prevent coming to future discussions later on or arguing while we're right. there and or the ball field wants to be used and you're there with equipment. Right, right. It's, wow. uh, it's, it's the, my understanding of the agreement is that it's sort of set up to uh, benefit the towns at, at town's request. Right. So that I'm trying to accommodate um, the use without impacting right. my own need. Right. So it's sort of open to interpretation of what my need is yeah. at the time, right. ultimately, as the owner. Right. So I don't know beyond, I, I don't know, I mean, as the owner, I do have, would have right to say that at, at this point, the work is going to impede the ball field use and it has to cease from happening at that point. Right. Um, you know, I don't know exactly when that will happen. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, with the winter months coming. I don't think there'll be much use of the ball field over the next few months as well. Uh, we do expect to try to break ground on this project uh, probably sometime over the winter. Um, again, most of the work will be being done on the interior of the building at that point. Uh, it's hard to say what the impact on the potential usage of the field will be at that, you know. See, and, and, and again, I, I get you're trying to be gracious to the town exactly but the town also has to figure out the logistics sure um, if we are I, I know full well the schedule of, of, of how this of how this works and in February you start to think about where what your what your assets are for field use across the five towns that yeah. participate in this league um, you start to think about practice schedules game schedules if it's different in February than it is in April, that's that's a huge problem because people because all of a sudden the planning that took place yeah. is moved because the, the the reality changed. Yeah. Well, I I would expect that by late spring that project will be well underway. So I may not be advantageous to plan to use the field because the parking lot the parking lot is is the issue that I see. You know, that's what I see too. I mean, I have no issue with people parking along the road on the edge of the property. Yeah, you can't control that anyway. Like, but you know, so I mean, it's really going to be like you know, I'm going to need to maintain site control uh, because of insurance regulations and uh, just risk and exposure that I'm not going to want people trespassing on the property because of you know, I'm only putting myself at risk. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to sort of open-endedly say, yeah, sure, come on the property and park and use it, you know. It's, so, sort, of, it's sort of a can of worms. I mean, right. oh, I, get I, it. I so, agree, and that's why you know, my attorney suggested a, you know, an agreement, and it's kind of probably, the, you know, I mean, I'm sure there may be some room for improvement, but I think it's probably the best that we can kind of come to terms with that. I, I don't know. I'm open so, to suggestions. Yeah, I, and, I, and I, I don't think we're going to resolve it tonight. Yeah. Um, because. It's, it takes a little thought. Exactly, and, I, and I'm open to, you know, having that offer remain open as far as, uh, you know, use of the field as, as uh, it can be used. Right, and I just don't know whether it's logistically feasible. I, and neither do I. The other, the other question that I would have is taking into consideration neighbors, mm -hmm. if the field is not being used for athletic reasons oh, it'll be maintained it'll be maintained yeah, okay yeah. so what it won't look like this well i won't unless you make hay you know <laughs> no because it's it's not it's not a hay field no, so it'll look like it would look like hell yeah yeah no it's uh yeah it'll be maintained okay the, uh, the other thing i understand was in an agreement with with frontier and their parcel is use and allow them to use the the building until june 30th well, is they, that still they have, they don't they're not allowed to use the building. They're allowed to uh, leave some records uh, in the building, 
and I'm actually negotiating that right now with, with the school because uh, they haven't really haven't really removed anything and I brought that to the superintendents uh, brought that to his attention about a month ago and he informed me that they had a uh, procurement in process with a uh, digital file transfer okay. company they had money set aside for that and they were trying to put that out to bid in order to get that going and then when I explained the actual condition of the building and that it sort of looked like people just got up and left at the end of the day and never came back, he went over there and looked at it and was kind of shocked and I think it was a bit of an eye opener because the way our agreement does read is that I'm allowing them to use, to keep the records there uh, as storage at their own risk and I have no, you know, it's a hold harmless where I'm not going to be there every day right. checking to see what documents are being taught, thrown out or what furniture or whatever, but if they consolidate their material into one area or one room, then I'm fine with that. And I mean, that's kind of the conversation I've had with them. It's sort of ongoing, um, keeping them apprised of where we're at and, you know, what my schedule is. And, you know, I'm not trying to, trying to work that out with them as uh, quickly as possible because that's not going to make a lot of sense for them in the long run. So that date is negotiable with them still. You're still yeah. I mean that's that. that's the date we put on the contract, but again, it's it's at their own risk. So, um, you know, I, I can't really be responsible or liable for stuff that they've left behind in the building. I'm trying to accommodate their needs and and be reasonable as well. But again, it's you know ultimately at their risk. Right. What's so, your construction schedule? We'd like to get in there. Uh, as soon as possible and do the demo down in the lower level and get that area opened up so that we can do a complete set of, of uh, plans and, and so you do the demo before you did the plans uh, well, well we have conceptual plans now done off of the you know existing plans of the building which are not really that accurate so we've kind of gone in and, and taken a bunch of field dimensions and measurements but we really want to sort of remove as much as possible that's not going to be reused so that we can have the shell of the building. I, I just can't imagine June 30 is going to be an option for them, but that's no. not our problem. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's most likely no not going to be. No it's going to need to be, you know, removed long before then. They're, they're, uh, I just said they're looking at other options rather than leaving it, th than leaving yeah. it there yes. or hiring somebody to come scan it all. Scan it all. They're looking at other options. To, they've had a long time to worry about this, I so I don't, you know. Yeah. But anyway, that's not our problem. No. What's, what are the next steps on, on figuring out the, the use for the field? Well, I just want to point out a couple of things about the, about the license agreement here. Um, under paragraph one, use purpose term, says license or hereby grants to the town and its employees, representatives, volunteers, and invitees a non-exclusive license to enter upon and use the property for the purpose of operating and maintaining ball fields and other recreational uses. So the maintenance obligation would be on the town um, as it's listed in here in, in terms of the ball field. In paragraph six, there's, there's a, included in here, there's a termination and revocation. The license, this license may be revoked by the licensor and the town upon written notice of revocation given to the other party at least 30 days prior to the termination date. So there's, it's not like, it's not like you, you're going to come to the town and, you know, and say, get your, get your field off my property no, no. in tomorrow. So no. there is, although 30 days isn't a lot of time, it, it is some time to... Right, but, to, but I'm not sure 30 days is sufficient is my right. point because, again, the planning, and all of, all of a sudden if you change your, your, your asset allocation, you know, let, let's say the plan's in place and then in, in mid-March, all of a sudden you're, you're good to go. Yeah, then, I think it's going to end up Go ahead, Joyce. World. John, you're, you're right in an ideal world that, you know, you would uh, know season by season, you know, whether you'll be able right. to use it for that season. Um, I think, um, I mean, I, I, I've only met him at meetings, sometimes in person, sometimes over the internet. Um, but uh, uh, at this point, we, we sort of have to decide, um, is this a, a guy that we trust? for just practical things like, do you think we can use the fields through the end of June this year? And my guess is he would tell us his best estimate. Yes, I think I'm not gonna get in there till July 1st, or no, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get in there in May. And, and the rent commission's gonna have to plan accordingly. I mean, I think nobody can forecast the future perfectly, right? 
Um, so 30 days notice doesn't seem unreasonable, but we can always ask in advance for what do you think is going to be going on and let the Red Commission plan accordingly season by season. I mean, it's, it's not going to be more than like one or two seasons, I don't think, right? Because you're not going to be building them for 10 years. It's going to be no, it's like gonna year, and right. maybe next year, depending on if you're building those other new right. uh, structures. Right. I, um, I, so, I, so the clock is ticking on those all fields as it is. And ideally, yeah, you'd be able to get all uh, one or two seasons out of it. But I, I don't think that's realistic. No, I don't know. Yeah. No, and, and, and again, it's the issue. And again, I'm, I, I just have to try to plan. The issue is also, well, if it's not available this year because he's got construction equipment on the parking lot or he's, he's worried about liability, but it, if then he decides to delay phase two, um, that obstacle for next spring may be gone and the field may all of a sudden be available again in 2020. And I, and I would be completely open right. to that. I mean, I think it's kind of cool to have a ball field on a open space like that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to, to a good time, you know? Um, I just can't, right. I, don't, I don't want to have my business impacted right. by trying to operate around the town's need to maybe use a ball I, field. I think, I think we need to, to revisit this. We need to table the, the license agreement. That's fine. Um, just because we're not, we're not there. My, my concern about the license agreement is that the mm. is that the purchase and sale agreement assumes that the license agreement is yeah. going to be entered into, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure how. Well, I, I'm drawing a blank on, on how we would change it. Yeah. Change what? How we would change this license agreement? Well, uh, other than maybe putting a, a date in that you would say we, we could use the field until June 1st of next year. We have access to the field June 1st, and then that would give you a deadline to, sit, to know you can start construction around that on June 1st, and then it would help Jonathan schedule. At least he knows next year. Yeah, yeah but uh, uh, otherwise you're... You're never going to know, and, and Jonathan's going to want to know as soon as he can, and, and you've got to deal with your, your construction people as to when do you start, and if you want to start on a certain day, and Jonathan says, no, I got a ball, I got a ball team committed there, we're back to arguing what do we do. Right, and, and it just makes me wonder whether the license agreement will, will just ever take effect. Yeah. You know, you're thinking about the people who use that field are the younger girls. They're, they're second to fourth graders. Typically, um, if they're not going to be able to park in that parking lot, that means, and, and there's certainly not enough curbside parking, for lack of a better term, on River Road to accommodate 10 to 20 cars. There, there just isn't. So then you're asking, you know, a bunch of seven and eight-year-olds to, to walk along Christian Lane a left on the river road until the, they have access to the to the baseball field because they're because they're, you're going to need to park on Christian Lane because you can't park over all, all the way on River Road to accommodate all the cars. So I just I, I, I think we need to table the conversation until we collectively look at this and just we may decide you know what Whaley doesn't have access to a softball field and and the other towns are going to have to to pick up the 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 slack mm -hmm. until we figure out the construction of, of another softball field, which isn't going to happen next spring, obviously. I mean, I think what, I mean, you know, we really, need, I really need to get the purchase and sale signed yeah. in order to move forward on the sale of the school. And I mean, if it's, if it's going to become that much of an issue, I mean, I hate to do it, but I would just withdraw the offer of a license and, and just say, right. table the whole thing. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to offer a license as sort of a a measure of good faith that if it's available, it can be used. But I, I can't get into like getting back into guarantees or dates of like drop dead date. You can use it until this because I mean, in all honesty, my pro I, I would like that project done and occupied by the end of next summer, like the building occupied. Like I, I don't, I don't. And, have and any then I realize that once the building's occupied, there's going to be people parking in that. And I don't know how many parking spaces. Are well, it's private property. Right. It's going to be private parking. It's not available for you know, people who want to play softball. I, I just can't, you know, liability, legal reasons, and just 
sort of yeah. Uh, yeah. general I, I think ownership we, rights. We, we had a, a similar discussion back when we were proposing to sell the school and dealing with Frontier on how and when and who would do it. And, and back then, this was last fall and maybe the last summer, the concern was the ball field. And I think the point was made that if Waitley feels they need a ball field for that use there, that we should be looking at other locations. Yeah. Uh, it's not like a surprise today that we're coming, hey, somebody wants to buy the property and we no longer have a ball field. Uh, I, I think some of the, the owners should have been out of town to look at other, other facilities and maybe that's the thing to do now is for the town to look at other locations. That's essentially what I'm saying. Okay, but uh, as far as holding all this up, uh, you know, we, we've had this for the last, what, 30 days at wait, least. Wait, 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 slow down. Who said anything about holding it up unless Brian did? And well, I that was an yeah. option here. Let me I think what when we says hold it up, it gives, you said we wanted to table this, and and I think basically Fred saying no, we can't table this. And that is holding things. Up. I don't want to table the purchase and sale. I want to table the license agreement. Well, let, let me the correct the purchase that. and sale references a license agreement. <coughs> uh, you know, it, it's well. Let me correct a, a misstatement that I, that I spoke earlier. Uh, paragraph twenty five of the purchase and sale agreement talks about post closing license. And at the end of that paragraph, it says, attached here to his exhibit A, which is the license agreement, which shall be executed at the closing on the premises. Okay. So, so we could actually we do have still a little negotiate bit of time. if it needs to be. But that would not preclude us from signing the purchase. No, we've got to sign it. Right. Well, I, I didn't. I, I guess I misunderstood what you said by tabling it. I, no, I was talking specifically about the license. Okay. Right. Well, that's fine. But yeah, but we. I think we need to go ahead with the purchase and sale agreement because this is oh, okay. critical right now. No, I, brought a check. I did bring a check. So. All right. We like right. checks. Okay. So, so does that? So that's the license, license agreement. We can. We can. We can put that off for. Uh, we should really try to nail it down before the next meeting if one way or the other to close in about 30 days so yeah, right I mean I have my doubts whether this will this whether there will be a license agreement and that's the right thought that's not on, that's on, on mr. Obear that's just the okay I'm not opposed to it the building should well I won't get into what the building should still be used as but with central offices I will stay quiet okay okay super so I'll send you a copy I'll send you a copy of that okay um, with that replacement okay. check yeah so that's all you need for me all we need from you okay okay all right old business Thank you so much for your patience, Mr. Thank you. It's no problem at all. Town Hall, construction update. The, uh, Fred, you were at the final inspection, right? Yeah, we had final inspection with the, with the uh, building inspector from FERCOG uh, yesterday. Uh, yes, yesterday. It's been a long week. Morning. Yeah, we've been here every day lately almost. Yesterday. Uh, but he had no major problems with it. He's going to issue the certificate of occupancy uh, for the town hall itself, and then we also have one for the addition because it was two separate uh, building permits. So he's going to issue that. We have some minor things to to uh, fix. You had a lock on one door and uh, uh, putting some drywall up in the, in the mezzanine, so uh, and, and tags on the fire extinguisher, so. Uh, them kind of comments he made, but that shouldn't uh, affect the occupancy permit if you're saying so. So we okay. should get that this week sometime, I guess, Brian. Yeah, once that work's done, I, or he's going to send well, it anyways, right? He's going to send it anyway. Yeah. Uh, the contractor agreed to do that, do that work to bring that up to his liking. So we still have some punch list items to work on, uh, and I, I guess the, the major one that's we've already met twice on is, is the operation of the mechanical system in there. Trying to get a handle on how the 
<coughs> HVAC system is supposed to work and what we got and what we don't have and we may have to buy more software or hardware to get it to work the best for our use. So uh, that's hopefully get resolved uh, in the next week or two. Uh, maybe not, but, but other than that, it's minor, minor stuff. Uh, and just the, the plan that I think many people are aware of, the Historical Society is planning on moving in on, on this Saturday, the 15th. Uh, is that correct? Uh, looking for volunteers, yeah. looking for volunteers to help. Uh, uh, and they have done some work on their space in the building as far as putting shelves up and, and the security system with ADT. Uh, we're dealing with getting the keys and securing the building for, for town, uh, town security. Right now it's kind of open for contractors to, not uh, open, but easy access for contractors to get in. Uh, after this week, they'll have to come to the town to get access and we will secure it for historical society uh, exhibits and whatever they plan on moving in over the weekend. So that will be secure one way or another. Uh, anything else? In terms of construction, well, I, I don't, I don't yeah, think so. Okay. Right. Well, let's go to the um, building steward. Yeah, so we have an offer from a uh, resident who has some experience in I don't know what the proper term is. Building overseer, um, I call it the building steward, who's gonna volunteer to help us um, really monitor the building in, in terms of its mechanicals and um, those types of things. So there was a proposal that was sent in and that you have in your packet from, from Neil Abraham to do that. I don't know what I don't know how formal we need to make how formal we need to make this, but um, we just want to to know that we'll let him know that we are uh, if the board's so inclined to accept his services. Uh, absolutely. The only uh, and with a thank you letter. The only question I have is, and I and it, it's it's a wonderful offer, but in terms of liability logistics of a volunteer overseeing a building and if something were to go wrong under his oversight jurisdiction how does that work um, if he were to get hurt performing the duties what happens with that I, I, I just think that we need to have an understanding of how volunteers are impacted and how volunteers impact the town if something happens with adverse effects. Is it different than being appointed to a committee? Well, a committee doesn't have, well, I guess a committee does have oversight over, yeah. yeah. But, but is it any different than, I don't know. than say, a, a private organization using the building and they're moving stuff in and out and, and something happens to the person doing that? Is this any different? Can I get here real quick? Yeah. Um, at FCAT, the same sort of thing came up um, about uh, volunteers and employees. And uh, when I was looking into the insurance on that, uh, volunteers are covered under workman's comp. And for some crazy reason that I never quite understood, but they explained it to me many times. And so I believe they base your workman's comp uh, a price of your insurance on your size your payroll right even though volunteers aren't on the payroll but volunteers are covered on your workman's comp i believe if i understood that right when it was um, helping out at fcat so that might be something to to look at that might kind of help with the the worry that john has there um, like right now we have plenty of volunteers doing plenty of things for the town um, and so it's not just this particular volunteer position, um, but it would be nice to clarify that. But, but looking at what he's proposing to do, it's, it's mostly monitoring and reviewing and reporting to the town 
if he sees something yeah. unusual, he's not going to go there and and uh, physically say shovel snow or hang up pictures on walls or yeah. or or clean even the bathrooms. So he's not even going to do that, you know. So it just walking through and and observing and you know they live two doors down as you know and they hear and see a lot of things because they're so close, whereas the rest of us aren't there. So. So my question is, and I'm going to use the, I'll use the library as an example. And again, I don't know. But does the library director monitor and report water runoff from the, I mean, does it get that granular or isn't that the function of the highway department to monitor those things as they would monitor all town facilities? Well, some of it is, uh, yeah, the, the town would, and also our, our security, our police would get involved too. Some of these these things uh, run off from the roof. Well, it depends on where it goes. If it's going into the building and he sees it, well, well, right, but isn't that isn't that ultimately the responsibility of, of our of our highway guys? Well, no, he wouldn't be going in. He wouldn't be going in. The highway guy wouldn't be going in, say oh, yeah, every right. day or after an event. But our something. highway our highway guys monitor. Um, snow on roofs. They monitor yeah. clearing out of snow from, from, from integral areas. Yeah, but they aren't monitoring water runoff. Runoff from the roofs. Well, I guess, but my point is no, nobody is. That's, I, I, oh, I, I don't disagree. No. I'm just saying I don't think it's time okay. I, I think at the end of the day, he's offering to be another set of eyes yeah. that will be there okay. yeah. I don't I, on a more frequent basis. I think it's important that this building will be have a less regular occupancy schedule than the library. Mm -hmm. And, and let, me, town buildings. Yeah, let me just say, Neil has been involved with the, the last two meetings we had on, on running the mechanical systems here, the HVAC and, and uh, systems, and he is, is showing experience in, in that kind of uh, building operations, say, uh, because of his prior experience and he's familiar with how to set thermostats and regulate them and control building temperatures and features like that and he's asked particular questions to the contractor that we're still waiting for answers for so uh, i guess right now he's helping the town figure okay. out the mechanicals of it so and, and he will continue to do that once we figure it all out he will know how it works how to set all the thermostats the master controllers and, and and all that in the buildings. Right, I'm not opposed, I'm just asking the questions. Yeah, okay, but I'm just saying that he's been involved already in, in yeah. helping us. All right, so, so let's, let's make it happen. Okay. Okay, well, I'll make a motion. Uh, do we need a motion or? No. Acceptance or? We don't really have a formal position no created. position, but okay. Um, I, I suggest we continue working with Mr. Uh, Neil Abraham, Abrams, whatever, uh, on being an oversight person for a town hall. I would second that yeah. and I'd add a thank you letter. Okay. Okay. Um, and one, one other thing came up. He's been working with the Historic Society, Historic Commission, I would say, in the past month, uh, trying to get the furniture cleaned and up to speed and repaired before we move it in for by the end of the month. So so that's the other activity that's been going on this past month. And I would just add that I hope that the the building is actually used a lot more than the library because I would love to see shows in there on a nightly basis. Regular. What's that? I said regular. Right. Unplanned or unplanned, yeah, planned, yeah. Anyway, we, we all right. We all also received several requests already to use the building in the next several months. So. Okay. We're looking at it already. Okay. Building opening on September 30th. I want a party. Uh, yes, you do. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've been. I, I, we kind of had a, a, a we call it ad hoc committee looking at this, uh, what to do, uh, whether we have a full-blown ceremony with it, uh, everybody there in a, in a program, whatever, uh, versus just uh, ribbon cutting an open house. I guess I've seen comments from one end to the other. And the more I think about it, and what I'm hearing lately, and I think maybe uh, I'll use Brian's support maybe on this, we're hoping to have a ribbon cutting on September 30th uh, in conjunction with the fall festival that's there, and also 
on the library book sale down, down the street. Uh, having a ribbon cutting at, at 11.30 in the morning, that's what the, so far the, the, the word is, uh, and have a few people speak before the ribbon cutting, I guess, uh, and, and the building would be opened that day from 10 a.m. until 2 or whatever, as long as the fall festival is there, people will come and go. Ribbon cutting at 11.30 with a few speakers uh, saying a few things, and I think the Grange wants to make a setup in the building, display, promoting their activity, and I think maybe a store commission wants a slideshow of history of town hall, whatever that could be happening in the building. Uh, and that's, uh, I guess, where I see we, we should be going with, with this. Uh, I'm not advocating, we have, uh, you know, 10 people in the front each uh, congratulating each other how well we all did and taking a half hour to 45 minutes uh, saying the same thing. Uh, just do the, the ribbon cutting. Uh, there'll be a band there. I, I guess the milk bottle band is proposed to be there. They can sing the Whaley song either before and after or during. Uh, we can publicize it. Uh, my thought is still to invite uh, either FCAT or the newspaper there, either that day or before, to do an article on it in the building uh, and, and let it go with that. Are you available, Jonathan, for the 30th? I would make myself available and, and, and if my two cents are worth anything. Um, well, I would say as chairman of the board, I think... This project has been going on seven years now right and we should and and this project tore apart this town for a while yeah yes um, and, and I think that we should have a well thought out celebration of what this town has accomplished in getting this, in writing the ship for town offices. I mean, this is the culmination of a multifaceted initiative that the town undertook. And I think that we should celebrate our collective success. And I'm not advocating that anyone talk for 45 minutes per person, et cetera, et cetera, because you wouldn't have a celebration anymore. You'd right. be, nobody would be there. But we should celebrate this. This is a huge achievement. And to not celebrate this, I think is doing a disservice to the people, including yourself, Fred, who have worked so hard on this for so long. I mean, I worked so hard on this for so long, I got tired of it and I walked right. away. Because it was just killing me. Right. So I think we should celebrate. It should be a ribbon cutting. It should be, right. I think we should invite, um, Representative Kulik, former Senator Rosenberg. I think I think people who have helped us along this path need to be thanked for the hard work. So is that much so, beyond whatever you call it? I think it should, we should have a celebration. So are you asking them to to speak then, or just to be there to cut the ribbon? Oh, I don't know. I believe that's a people higher than my pay scale. But I mean. This is an accomplishment. We preserved an historic right. building. I know, and, and uh, the building committee deserves, I think, more credit than anybody. Who is I, I didn't, trying to, absolutely. I didn't trying say to, that was not the case. No, I know. And I've been trying to well, involve it as much as I can. And I think the building committee, the Historical Society and right. Commission. Um, CPC. The CPC, absolutely. I mean, it's more than just a couple. There, there are a lot of people, and and unfortunately, if there are so many people who've been so integral in this project, you have to give these people an opportunity to say a couple things. Otherwise, you run the risk of looking like you're omitting someone from the important role that they played. Well, we, we've got, like you were saying, I think so many people involved. How do you decide? Who? We, we can figure that that out later, but. I think we need to agree that this should be a celebration of, of a success rather than just a shrugging of the shoulders and saying, yeah, good, we're done. 
Well, like I said, it, it would be a short, uh, it would be ribbon cutting with short presentations. That's what I was saying. I'm not. Saying Adelia. It. I like your uh, proposal. I've been saying all along that Kulik really worked hard for us, and I want him to be invited. And we weren't sure who would be the one to invite him. And I'd like to have the town do it. I feel that the town is the representative that should be issuing those invitations. I don't think it should be 100 people or two people, or I mean, more than two people. That would be fine for me. I don't want a lot. But I, I do think the people that helped us get this off need to be invited, recognized, and given a chance to say a few words. And I know they would, I feel they would oblige that. I'm sure they would. Okay, so is that something that Brian? Pretty, if, Brian perhaps, if Brian perhaps the letter I can sign as the chair. Okay, to Bill Kulik and Rosenberg? And Rosenberg. Okay. My second question is, in advertising, I really think the newspaper needs to be aware even before the event, yes, we'll a few days, yeah. so that more people that may not have read the scoop would hear about it. Um, the Historical Society takes care of advertising their event and what's going on with their fall festival. But this is bigger and more important than that event. Right. And I, would, I don't want to not, I, when I do Memorial Day, I often say, what's going on for the town because I want to have it covered. But I think, I really feel the town should be the motivator here with the advertising. One of the people do that, that was my plan to do it before Perfect. the event. Now, are you going to have another, an article in the paper for your event? Yes. Small festival, you will do? We always invite them. They don't always show up, but okay. uh, they one, have sometimes done that. One of the ideas that I had was and I'm guessing that they would accept this offer, is you could have one of the local radio stations broadcast from the fall festival that day. An HMP or an HAI that would, you know, because they see it, that, that, that's part of their, 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 their generation of, of, of a loyal listening audience. Um, but I think that that would be that would ensure at a minimum that, that this is a really visible thing and that it puts what we've accomplished on the map. Um, and that doesn't preclude the, the recorder or Gazette covering it, whatever. But, you know, we've done a pretty good job on this building. So I think there should be a, 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 a small group of two to four people to, to, that plans this thing, honestly. Don't make it a big, don't make it a big uh, participatory thing because it gets muddied down that way. But if 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 a small, less than a handful of people want to plan this, well, we have kind of got the ad hoc committee already going with four people. So who's on that committee? Well, the three of us and, and Donna, I think. Don Weiler. Yeah. Okay. Is that does that work? I mean, we've got yeah, Delia, myself, and Brian. So, okay. Okay. Anything I can do to help with the publicity, I'm happy to do it. Um, but I'm, I'm sure the radio station would broadcast from there. Well, I shouldn't say sure, but I'm. It's worth the ask. Okay. Okay. Um, historic preservation restrictions review and vote on an historic preservation restriction agreement with the Mass Historical Commission for 194 Chestnut Plain Road. Finally. Town Hall Emeritus. Could we, could we eliminate that word emeritus? I added it. Like it. It's the town hall. The, the only town hall we will ever exactly. have. <laughs> Ideally, I'm just having a little bit of fun with my misery from about six years ago, that's all. So as part of the condition of the Mass Historic Grant that the town accepted, uh, the town agreed to execute a uh, preservation restriction on the building. And we have been asking this for, gee, when did we start? December? And it's taken this long to get it. 
I think Brian deserves the badge of patience award for this accomplishment. It has been easily one of the most frustrating things I've done since I've been here is to track down for it to take eight months for a template agreement to get sent back to you. It's well, thank you, Brian. You're welcome. All right. Um, use policy for town hall. So, before we get a little bit, before we get down into the details of this, the, the thinking was is that the board would review this. This is a draft policy that was put together, um, and then we would put it out for public comment um, for the next probably until the next meeting that we'll see what sort of feedback we get on this policy. Um, so I know there's been, I, I've, I've heard some comments back from the board in terms of questions and uh, proposed additions or I think most pr proposed additions. Um, but I think it's something it would be good to get in place before the before the building opens. Um, I don't know how we want to go about going through this. Um, most of the comments, and I, I think I think a, a good way to do it would be to, and I printed out in Joyce, I think I had sent you uh, the sheet that Fred had done, yeah. right? You sent me Fred's comments. I've got that. Um, and yours? I suppose you have yours? I suppose I have mine. Yeah. Is it Joyce's? And Fred, this was yours. Yeah, I'm actually trying to bring mine with me. Yeah. So. And I know they're kind of hard to see because. And I mean, I don't know that we need to hit on all the uh, on all the wording changes and stuff, but I think some of the some of the bigger issues that we wanted to look at um, had to do with, and we could figure out the reservation thing as we go along. But it was really the I think the first thing would be the fees and, and how that's broken out. That was a, a a first attempt based on the old town hall policy, which, believe it or not, we did have one, and what we've seen in in other towns. And Joyce, I think you had a question about what about we we not necessarily official nonprofits. Is that fair in terms of the uh, status of this group? Yeah, yeah. I guess I think like uh, like the scoop, for example. Uh, the, does that count as a Wheatley resident or nonprofit, or is it a private event if it's just folding the scoop, or is it a public event? Because I don't let anybody come to that. So it, it, there was, it seemed to me that the categories we had might be a little blurry, and maybe that's on purpose. But if it is, then that's why I go into it, understanding that. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so was the other uh, another person? Somebody actually contacted me about knowing that topic was going to come up, and uh, they just wanted to make sure that uh, we try to make the town hall available as available as possible, um, with you know, as low as possible and zero impossible fees for uh, for Waitley residents. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, you know, like for example, as a rehearsal space for uh, for a, a local band, um, would that be something where uh, maybe maybe that should be something where there's a twenty five dollar fee? But uh, yeah, I I just wanted to make wanted to bring that kind of up because it's not like a money making affair. Uh, it would definitely be a private event unless you make your rehearsals open to everyone. <laughs> Um, then it, it might price that particular local group out, right? Um, so I'm just, just trying to think of specific examples 
that where I couldn't necessarily tell where they fit into these uh, public event, private event, uh, weightly resident, weightly nonprofit. Well, one, one of the benefits of the usage fee, even a nominal one, um, is that it really does help aid with the covering of costs for maintenance and, and, and extra things you might want to do to enhance the, the property. Uh, again, I'm thinking of Harley He Field as the example of when, when we charge adult, you know, we don't charge youth as, a, as an uh -huh. extension of recreation, but we do charge the adult leagues, and that allows us to maintain and upkeep and, and do special things that we ordinarily would not be able to do. So I, I just want to be cognizant of the fact that we don't want to necessarily, you know, may, maybe we can create some kind of a revolving fund around the town hall that would allow for special projects that wouldn't necessarily be on the backs of the, of the, of the taxpayer. Mm. That's a, that would be a good thing to be putting up front when people like into the policy that uh, if, if, if people knew that they're paying this nominal fee but that it's going to go towards uh, keeping the building nice that, right, I, yeah. that would go a long way towards making even a nominal fee be something people will happily pay yeah. Judy what were you going to say one thought I had is that for something like a rehearsal group or, or for people who are aiming at performances, that they sign some sort of agreement that would commit them to put on a benefit concert to benefit Town Hall in lieu of rent. That would mean that a group like, say, the Milk Bottle that doesn't necessarily collect any revenue would still be contributing, and it would also provide more events for cultural, cultural benefit of the town. I think it would be a win-win. I like that idea. I also thought about having, if there was an event that was revenue generating, that the town would get, you know, one percent of net, whatever, whatever it was, so that so that there would be, again, a revolving account really is incredibly helpful. So, Judy, your example would go to the revolving account, and then. Again, I, I just I, and so I guess I, I'm not sure that we're prepared to do this here. Another well, thing. No, I think they want to put it out for public I, comment I, generally. I, I think the, or at least my intent is, is not. This is not a, a money maker thing for the for the town. I view it more as maybe keeping out people that we don't want there without biasing them or, or saying some identifying some group that we don't want. Uh, so people driving down the street say, hey, there's a building we can go practice in this weekend, uh, free. And they come in and they do damage. I think, it's, it, to me, it's, it, you know, if, if they're serious, they need to pay something. It keeps that kind of people, or groups, out of, out of the building, which we probably don't want to begin with. But it's a nice way of, of saying that. Uh, and the other thing, for future maintenance, I don't know, if, if you say that in there, then, then 10 years down the road when we have to do something and we know we're gonna do something, probably painting in 10 years, people are gonna say, well, you collected all these fees, why do you need more money for it? Well, that's not gonna come anywhere close to probably paying for a painting of the, of the building or, or other repairs. So I guess if we say that here, we've gotta be careful and only be partially cover or, or as a, a initial, okay. Of course, Payment, right. Toward, and, yeah, you, you can toward towards that, but it's not going to be the the only thing for future maintenance and repair of the building. And you can wordsmith that with each yeah. project that comes that comes to, to, to fruition. I'll, again, I'm going to use Hurley Hurley as an example, just because it probably is the closest anecdote we, or analogy we have to it. Right now, um, if you drive past Hurley, you'll notice that um, the backstop on the small diamond is is gone. Uh, and that you're going to be seeing a regrading of, of, of the uh, home plate area down towards the, the driveway. That's not being done on taxpayer dollars. That's being done through the use of the revolving account because of the fees that are charged um, to maintain and improve the facility that not just the town uses, but, but people from literally across Western Massachusetts use. So, but, but people also are reasonable that if you had a major capital operation 
take place, then a revolving account can't possibly cover that. It's the little things that, that, that helps do it. So I, I think you can create language that anybody who doesn't, who's not looking to just poke holes in something will understand what the purpose is of, of, of the account and that, their, and that their fees paid for that. Here. Can do that. Go ahead, Judy. To your comment about damage, the Historical Commission did some research on what other towns did way back when this whole project was first started. And at least one town requires a security deposit, a refundable security deposit. No, they have that in here. Okay, well. $100 per event or per okay. but, but that's that's one way to deal with that. Yeah. Right. And, right. And then for, for, for just general meeting use, I mean, I don't think we should be, if the VFW wants to meet in town hall, I don't think we should be charging the VFW to meet in town hall no more than we charge the Grange to meet in town hall. Because it's a, it's a, it's a community service that's being provided. Well, I think some of, some of that may be covered in the, in the table here, and it's which box do you fit it in, and, and there's always going to be some that are different that you can't say, well, is there a fee or not? And, and I think the bottom line is this has to come to either town administrator or select board, right, for if we want a group to use it for some event or whether we charge or not. The way that it's, the way that it's written now is that, and we'll have to talk about this after in terms of if we want to allow any type of uh, malt and wine, beer and wine, uh, on the premises, but if they're not requesting a waiver and they're not seeking and they're not seeking to have alcohol on the property, yeah. then it could just be approved by the town administrator. Right. But if they're seeking a waiver from one of these provisions, it, it, as it's written now, the select board reserves the right to waive any and all usage fees and security deposits. Um, if the, it's just going to be a, a kind of a, a rubber stamp. If you meet, right. the, if you're going to comply with everything, then then go right. ahead and we'll just schedule right. it. And, be on your way, but if you want some relief from any of these provisions, then we would want it right, but it, before the select board. But it's going to be hard, I think, now to give examples of what is what kind of groups are included as a public event or private event, and whether you charge a fee or not. Uh, I mean, I do know there's some auction houses looking for places. Yeah, I mean, we could. Uh, Brainstorm this death, I guess. What what kind of activity is cool, actually? Yeah. Right. I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's bring a in instead of the Polish Sotheby's, club. Bring in Sotheby's. So instead of going to a Polish club, they would come yeah. to our place. Always looking, that's a big space of you. Yeah. I think that's a very cool idea, actually. That would idea. be other other events, right? Up for meeting room, 150 plus the better deposit. Cover, they better cover that floor. Tell you that. All right. Well, let's. So. I think we need to go back and take another practice. Okay. So. so I mean, is the board okay with? Let's use. Let's use. The, the Fred had some some wording additions that I I don't have a problem with. Um, are, are we okay with with putting that version out as it's written? Yeah. Um, Knowing I that it will be it. The thing that in this copy, the, the the red words were the ones that uh, Fred has added. There was right. one place where I didn't quite understand the sentence. I'm trying to find that here. Um, uh, oh yeah, uh, the end of 3.2, there's um, uh, about the reservation uh, being made below. And then at the end, at the end I guess this, I'm not sure I got the, the sentence right here. It says reservations shall also be made for town departments, boards, and committees conducting town business. And then there's no period or anything. And then hours of use shall be specified and any changes approved. To that, I'm not sure what that second sentence refers to the top they, of page two. They don't go together. No, that's a separate sentence. The, the hours of use, uh, what I was saying, should be on the request to use the building. Use the facility. That's not what the, yeah, okay. And, okay, the other, <laughs> there should have been a period on the bottom of 3.2, that other. I guess we'd like to know if town boards and committees are going to use it to have a schedule rather than just show up or, or post an agenda on our website saying we're meeting there next Tuesday. I think 
Right. Oh, yes, okay. it'll get scheduled. I, I understand yes, that, but the scheduled. time lapse it'll be scheduled. Scheduled. Thank you. Uh, we don't need that. We don't need the hours of use shall be specified and any changes approved. Doesn't say like, where you specify it, doesn't say who's going to do the approval. It just, it, I think the previous census makes sense all by themselves. Right, but. And we don't need that. Well, but as, as a separate condition, I was saying that we should know what hours people are going to use it. We, I don't see it in here anywhere, other, other than the time period from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Well, that that's, 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 that's true for any town office or building. Right. It'll, it'll if be, I want to use this right. room for whatever, I need to make sure it's available and then reserve it. Right. What we don't have here is the application. And there, there'll be an Okay, well, whether it's here or on the application, whatever. Yeah. But I, it wasn't in here. I didn't see it in here. But, yeah. but if again, if the Grange wants to use it for a meeting, yeah. I'm not sure that they should, if, it's, if a room is available, I'm not sure they should have to go through an application process. They should call up who's ever keeping the the, the schedule of, 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 of town office rooms and say, is it available on X date? And if it's available, then you book it. No different than yeah. you book a conference room in a business. Right, well, that's what I'm saying here. But again, I, but again, I think there's a difference between applying well, for use from an outside organization and an, and an internal organization needing to, schedule, to book a room for it. What right? if you just have so but both that, that everyone has to file an application. Yeah, everyone, everyone has wants to, make, to use it. Everyone but has only to. once. But the range well, I, and I the historical site, well, historical site is the least. Yeah. But any other organization will file an initial application and then can book the room off of that application. So if someone new comes in who's never used it before, they have to file an application. One of well, the, one of the things yeah. we, we looked at was uh, uh, the, the, well, you should have a responsible person name on on it you know on a record anyway if there's a problem that arises when that group is right but that name for 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 an organization at the grange or the vfw or 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 it, the open space committee i'm just picking a random thing that person who mm -hmm. signed the application yeah. is, a, is a is a is a rotating person on all the time anyway so i'm not sure that at least at the time of the application someone yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the, the Grange doesn't have to keep reapplying every time they want to use the room. Although but, they apply every once a year. No, right. I, I think I, I sit in here, if you want to do it every Monday, yeah. first Monday of every month, right. tell us and we'll put that on a calendar somewhere. First Monday every month is... is right, is yeah, no, a, so a, have, absolutely, as long, yeah, but the, the town... To but the, they have to tell somebody, we need to put it on a, on a calendar. Of so course, the see. building has to be scheduled. Right, that's all I'm saying, yeah, yeah. schedule it. Don't just say as soon as they can go into the room. <laughs> yeah, no, Fred, Fred's, Fred's right. saying, Fred, this Fred. Right, yeah. <laughs> is saying that regardless of your, the process, this Fred is right, yeah. but he's also saying that there should be some form of application ahead, just once ahead of time. And, yeah. and my, only, my only thought was, is it an, a, just another administrative burden that someone's got to read it, someone's got to file it? Again, I, I, I know we don't, require that well, you have to know who you're giving a key to because the keys the key presumably will be here that well, someone's got to come in and get the key for yes the you do on yes. behalf of an organization mm -hmm. well, is who, it a key or a code or whatever is it a key well who, who, who does the, who, I mean, who does the scheduling for this building is it all whoever is here in the yeah, building at the time okay well it's going to be amy then yeah. it's going to yeah, do this. So there should there there should and we we thought about it a little bit. There should be a if it's going to be a recurring event. So yeah. Somerville Club is one that typically used that building on a recurring basis, mm -hmm. and, and the Grange. We were we, we were trying to think. It's not quite to the extent of the historical society where they're having sort of. We'll talk about that next. You know where they have where we have a lease and it's their space. But, but yeah, how do we facilitate it and make it a little bit easier? Maybe they pay one security deposit and we hold it for the whole year. Um, and then in terms of scheduling, it's just give us a call and we'll schedule it. Um, but I think that there's been some thought into how that might go. If there's a security, if we're requiring a security deposit, it feels like there has to be a accompanying application anyway, because now we, in effect, we're entering into a contract and they need documentation that 
of the terms they're going to get back their hundred dollars and we need documentation of when we get to keep the hundred dollars so it sounds like the application and again it can be you know, once a year or one what whatever term it doesn't have to be every time snowmobile wants to meet but there is a person who has assumed responsibility for earning the right to get their hundred dollars back that's fine I, I have no problem with that i, I will actually do then i'm going to um, I was just going to say precedent setting. The Grange has always given and was Mary Ellen. She got the schedule of all the meetings, and if we weren't going to use it, we let her know if for some reason we weren't. But it, it scheduled in all of our second and fourth Thursdays, and I assume the snowmobile did the same. same. So that yes. you could look at a calendar and you knew right. who was going to use it. Right, that's true, Manny. That's true. This, this, and I think this. that would be maintained the same. We would expect the same thing to go forth in the future. Right. right. The, the one thing that we need to be aware of is if, again, we get our ideal world and the building is used a, a fair amount, I, again, I'm using Hurley. I, there is no way at Hurley we ever have a true understanding of who left the bathroom unlocked or who left trash around or who. So it, it, it is just something that, and we've never, we literally have talked about this for hours because of but multiple uses. I mean, let, let's say for, as an example, the, the Virginia Alice room is being used downstairs and the auditoriums being used upstairs and uh, I thought they were so here. I thought they were so there. It can be mine them because everyone will always say it wasn't me. So some system has to be put in place. I mean, it's, it's one thing for a field and a bathroom and a, you know, but this is a building that we've invested over a million dollars into. I think, that, uh, Jonathan, I think your point is in here somewhere. Okay. Well, if it is, then I'm going to clean up after even the kitchens where I ask to clean up and wash the floors and whatever. Right, but how do you know who was. Uh, my well, point is that we have Neil Abrams yeah. on the job. Okay. Neil will, Neil will tell us that. And he'll do the, the due diligence to figure out, all right, did you leave them? Yeah. It wasn't me. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think part of this is we'll start with something. This is a policy. Right. It's amended. Yeah. It can be amended by the board and changed Let's, as. as Let's building. put it up for public comment and we'll go from there. And so all these great ideas should be added to the public comment. Is there a, 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 a place for the public comment? If, 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 if Dan wants to make public comment, how does he do that? <laughs> He's not the best example. I don't know. <laughs> he'll, he'll just tell me. <laughs> Can we put it on the website and just... We'll put it on the website. Ask for comments and, and we discuss it next meeting and, and, then, then, and then even a meeting after that. Do they that email them or how do they, they, how do they submit? We'll, let's have Wednesday. this be emailed. This will be on the email. This will be on the website with instructions on who to email it to. Okay. We'll email public comment to. Can they do that one? What will be on the website? Tomorrow. Ooh, yeah. And then we can, yeah, tomorrow. we can talk about it at the next meeting and then I'm saying make a decision the, if we can then the week the next meeting after that so right we need to depending on what comments we get we need further discussion yeah okay okay yeah, yeah. can i put, throw one last thing in there by all means okay I, we have five categories here public events that are way to the residents and non-profits private events that are way to the residents and non-profits and then any event and I think it might be a good idea to consider, at least, um, events for which you're charging admission might be a separate category. Um, that's I am just thinking of, of concerts. Um, and I guess the other thing that I feel like needs to get defined a little better is like if one person from a group is a Waitley resident, does that make it a public event? under the Waitley resident rate, right? You know, I'm, I'm a member of a group where, you know, there's like two or three Waitley people, but, you know, maybe 10 from other places. Yeah. Where does that fit here? If it's, whether it's public or private. Um, if it's a nonprofit and, you know, somebody from Waitley happens to work there, 
Does that count as a Waitley nonprofit, or is that uh, any event? I mean, which basically, anybody who doesn't have a Waitley affiliation is in that last category, right? Uh, yeah. So, what is what constitutes a Waitley affiliation? Is I'm going to come up. I'm going to let Judy go, and then I'm going to go. So we have to think. Yeah, I, I didn't catch what Judy said, but I think there's that that's something that we have to be. You know, find a, 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 an easy way to settle that. And, but I'm okay with being generous about it, but we should just have that be something that's consistent. It's my understanding that other towns, and I can, and I know at least two examples, if the Waitley resident makes the application, it's considered a Waitley resident right. event. Oh, okay. So the Waitley makes the application, his name is on so, the So, so, in your example, if there are two or three out of 15, and it's the Waitley person who makes the application, it's a Waitley event, but there needs to be at least one. Well, I, and I'm gonna, I, I'm sure I'm not gonna be on the winning side of this one, but I, I would argue that we are a region, we're not an individual town. Um, we sink or swim by our, our, our communityism, for lack of a better word, not that it is a word, and that I think, you know, if someone, if someone wants to use the facility that lives in Springfield, it's one thing, but if someone wants to use the facility that lives in Hatfield or Waitley or Deerfield or Sunderland, who cares? It, we thrive if we do things together. And we don't nickel and dime somebody just because they live in an adjoining town. So I would argue that if you come from a town that ha that's adjacent to Waitley, it's the same as being a Waitley resident. And it's a $25,000, $5,000. I don't care what the dollar amount is, but it also avoids the gray area of Waitley resident, non-Waitley resident. Uh, I, I, know, I think that's just opening it up to way more people than we don't know who they are and what they're going to do. Well, we can always restrict it if, we get, if, if we're getting 50 requests a day, but... I know, but I, I think at least Waitley resident, we may know who it is, or some idea of where they live in town and what they do. Uh, well, maybe. Somebody in Hatfield is part of a group out of Springfield and they come here. Do we want that? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to be community -minded. I know, uh, and I don't know if other communities have well facilities like this or not. It's also a revenue generator. The more people you open it up to, the more revenue you make. I know. Uh, but like well, can all go into okay. public comment? Okay. All right. Um, Town Hall lease. Town Hall lease. So you have in your packet, so it's a simple lease here. Um, I think the Historical Society has seen it. Um, it's a typical lease requiring insurance. Uh, which I've gotten proof of insurance from the Historical Society already. Um, talks about indemnification of the landlord. I mean, really the only, most of this is really boilerplate of a simple lease agreement. Um, and the question, really the only outstanding question in my mind is, um, is paragraph number three in terms of rent. Um, and I guess to, to some extent, it implicates two, which is the term of the lease. Um, one of the one of the questions we don't have answered yet, and it will take about a, it will take a year to do it, is what is the, what is the cost to operate the building in terms of utilities? The biggest one being electricity. We know Comcast, and we, we know Comcast, but in terms of electricity, what does it cost? Um, we obviously don't know that yet. Electricity, you know, that building has it. It has it's climate controlled, 365 days a year, um, and that's it's all done by what is this split source heat pumps or something like that. Many splits, yeah. Uh, many splits. So it, it's everything's electric now. Um, so in the discussions that I've had, there was a proposal from the historical society to pay. Um, what amounted to, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, would be essentially a 25% of um, 
of what those utilities would be. Right now, it would just be based on a projection. Twenty-five percent is roughly equivalent to the floor area. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, this is there. That's the email that we have received. Yeah, I, I don't have no issue with the 25%. It's just 25% of what? It's the, yeah. is and, the, and, and there would be uh, no rent paid above and beyond that? No, that's that's all they're that is the rent. proposing. No, utilities. <clears throat> I'm no lawyer, but I'm worried about the... the Well, it, it would be considered rent, and the landlord, the landlord, the town is responsible for providing all utilities. Okay, what you what you send us your estimate? This is at even ever source. That's an estimate still, or so. Here's a problem. The problem with with that one is that. For some reason, on our most recent bill for August, we have no bill usage at that building. Oh, yeah. So that one is that one is it, it covers essentially July sixth to August sixth. So I think that's going to be higher. Okay. But again, it's hard to know. It, it, like like we discussed, but it's going to vary based on the seasons as well. Going to be a lot less than probably the that's it. in the spring and fall it's going to be less right late summer and early spring so uh, until we get a year's worth of the of the building operating it's going to be hard to determine what that is i think the historical society would be willing to true up the figure after the fact plus or minus yeah, I thought I saw an email in our packet to that effect. It would be pretty comfortable. Right, but okay, and these others for Verizon, Comcast, that's actual, pretty close. Uh, I, I guess, yeah, I, I know what they had, the five 7,000 range, and, and we've got estimates here of uh, what Brian came up with was uh, 6,649 annual, which is, in their range, you divide that by four, it's a 1600. And they were proposing 1500. I, I, I guess based on, on some rational numbers and estimates here, I, I, I guess I would suggest we go with, with this estimate at a 1600. And it's only, what, for a year, I guess, and then we can revisit it and decide if it needs to be adjusted. The, the thing that that's going to affect this more so than anything is the use of the building, other people's use of the building. I mean, we kind of know the the time period historic society is going to be in there, uh, the hours if you want to figure that, uh, but it's everybody else in there. And and my thought is to go go with this estimate that Brian put together for the first year. And then I think just language in there, right, to revisit it after a year. Well, we could just we could just set the lease term to to what we want. I, I mean, the underlying issue, I guess, is whether the board agrees with the the proposal from the historical society that it, that one way to calculate the rent is is based upon twenty five percent of the utilities. I, yeah. I, I'm not going to be popular when I say this, but I'm worried about the pricing of this sense. Can you? I'm worried about the precedent this sets to have a, <clears throat> a, a non-town entity virtually paying no rent. And what is our basis for saying no to some other non-town entity that may, that, do, that may do wonderful things for the town? And then we say, well, sure, but it's, we're going to charge you X, Y, or Z. Um, I, I don't think this is a popular idea, and I think it's been floated, but 
I would be a lot more comfortable with all of this if the Historical Society became an arm of the Historical Commission. And they can govern it however they want. They can have no oversight. But from a purely, from a purely, from a perspective that did not set a precedent of, of providing a non-town department arm with virtually no rent, if you make the historical society a function of the commission, then they don't pay any rent at all. Okay. Well, but, but then they're they're eligible for uh, submitting capital improvement projects for our budget every That's year. That's true. That's absolutely true. And and I, I guess the the the, uh, the other argument I would have an argument, but but I guess support for for having a, a private group there, let's say historic society, is uh, I think it affects our insurance on the building because we have presence there. We have somebody there using a building uh, every week or more frequently than that, even though you've got these other meetings going there, but I think that helps us for uh, our insurance on the building. I'm not saying that they wouldn't be residing there just like they would without this. I'm just saying that it, from a purely pres precedent perspective, I think it, it's just cleaner if they become an arm of the Historical Commission. Do you have me thinking whether that's well, I completely understand why that would be a good thing that we can get it to work. The advantages, the part that I can't figure out um, is historical, historic, historical societies, a 501c3, that raises money. And that might, what we found with the 250th is we have to have two separate organizations. There's the one that resides within the town and uses from the, you know, from the town budget, and then a completely independent fundraising arm, the 501c3, and I don't know. Yeah, We'd have to. Of, I mean, Friends, Friends of Library is, is, is a pretty similar. Yeah, that's another, another example where on paper do they have to exist separately, even though they work in tandem. You know, I, what, what is the legal relationship between the Friends of the Library and the library? Well, I, 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 I don't think it, it's. Maybe it's not a, a great uh, example, but, I, I, and because the Friends of the Library don't, reside in, in, in the library. I don't think obviously. there's any closer legal relationship. Right. Than, I don't think there needs to be. But, and I'm not sure the Historical Commission is authorized under Chapter 40A, and I don't know necessarily well, we should, that some of the Historical Society activities would be authorized under that. Perhaps we could find out. Uh, but don't, uh, I'm just asking, Adelia, don't you get, or Aren't you eligible for certain kinds of state grants, state funds? We can apply for grants, correct. But I think, Jonathan, your idea is in the back of our mind and should be addressed at a future time. It's not the time right now. We need to get through the uh, immediacy of this. But you're you're leading right into a segue for future discussion. And I, and I thank you because, again, what would prevent the grants from saying, I want a permanent office in this building? The difference is that the historical society is using the artifacts and the preservation of town, whereas other groups are immediate, just going on, ongoing. So, right, but, but, you, but, but you I hear could, you. The, the grant could say, "Well, we're going to have this that benefits the town in Y way." So we should have that conversation. We will. But well, I think there, there has been an agreement to allow you in the center school before, right? Was well, something Correct. I've seen to, to allow historic society to occupy space mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, center school. So it's not like we're creating it's something new. It's not, it, we're continuing that use of having them in a town building. Right. So it, it's not a new organization coming in or we're doing anything any different than I guess we have. But just because you did it one way in the past doesn't necessarily mean no. that it was the right way to do it. I mean, we had town offices in a non-compliant ADA yeah. building right. for ever, and it wasn't the right thing to do, and that's what got us down this process to begin with. But we're 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 able able the milk bottles and... <laughs> that's a fair question. Yeah, that's <laughs> Saturday. It'll be Saturday. Let's move it. You'll be there. For <laughs> one day. Just start society. Society. Yeah. But we have been paying the electricity and the heat 
for the center schools. So right. That is, in a sense, we're moving that same issue to the town hall. I, I get it. It's just so something that we need to. You call it rent or you right. call it utilities or whatever. But I don't think we should kick this can down the road because it, it needs to be. It, it is a precedent setting thing. So. Okay, so do we need a, mm -hmm. yeah. what do we stand here, Brian? We need a motion to accept the rent here for? I, I do like Judy's idea that they can true it up if all of a sudden the, the number comes back and it's, because I have a feeling that that electricity thing is pretty low. Oh, it's very low. Yeah. I mean, I just think about the electricity that, that my house goes through and I'm only yeah. 2,900 square feet. So, so the question that we've had is the term in the, the term of the lease and um, the three the payment of rent. Um, those are still questions that you are make it a, a, a year lease. Yeah. Okay. Go along with a year. Joyce. And that seems reasonable. And then what was the other one, Brian? Money. The rent. So you're saying, well, looking at, at August, okay. This during this period, well. we didn't have we didn't have the heating or the air conditioning units on, right? They were they had to have been on for part of that period. Were they on part of that period yeah. in August? They were on full. Not July. Well, July. To I mean, yeah. Okay. I can try to get so, them. When are we meeting? Twenty six. Uh, I know September is going to be. We can call Eversource and see if there was an error on the bill. Well, obviously there must have been an error on the bill or someone wired yeah. around the meter. Um, they don't read them every month. They but they do an estimate if it's not they do right. an estimate. And the estimate, an estimate is zero. I just go with it. I, I'm, I'm comfortable going with this number for. Well, I, I, but I, with the with the thing that that I, I think we should revisit, and and just have a, a what's the new term? What's the PC term for gentlemen's agreement? General people. General people's agreement um, that we we revisit whether it was a a fair or or we just roll it into the year two lease as a as a prorated add-on well there or or use this for this this next uh well, we're looking at, at there, there are two monthly issues. do it to do it till uh till january i i guess and, and for the next quarter and then you'll have some better figures for the winter months there are two issues one is the overall bill and the other is the overall usage if in fact the building is tremendously popular and hugely used, then presumably the historical society share should perhaps be lower than the 25 percent because it's not using as much. So, so when when it's revisited, I think one needs to balance both things. Yeah, we're all friends, so we can figure this out rather than being real specific today. Which, just for the just just for the record. I don't want to be perceived as taking sides, but the, the, the Historical Society, the Friends of Town Hall, made a very large contribution to the, yeah. to the project. They raised over $150,000 yep. for the project. Sure the Historical Society could, itself can contribute to 10000 Okay, so I, I guess uh, I, I would... That was for future rent, right? Well... Again, I don't, have a, beef, I don't have a beef with the cost at all. Okay, so based on, on this, so the monthly you're looking at is five hundred fifty-four dollars. Five hundred fifty dollars. Well, I think we're going to do it annual. Do it quarterly, right? That's what the you want the annual. Okay, so use your figures here, Brian. Oh, you want to make an even number? Even now, okay, sixty-six hundred. Well, annual. Annual, annual sixty-six hundred annual. What would it be? Divided by what's sixty-six yeah. divided by twelve? Yeah. Not, it doesn't total go. Cost, not well, we don't need a month, just, just. Then it was annual. Well, 66 divided into three places would be 22 a, a, a trimester. Yeah. But 66 was the 100% estimate, not the 25%. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, What's the 25% estimate? 
No, well, the, the 20, the 1600, that was annual. Okay, that's the annual one. So 16 divided by, so $400. roughly $400. 400 a quarter, yeah. And they're paying the quarterly, that's the agreement, okay. So $400 quarterly, okay. Is that agreeable? Yeah. Well, we'll be asking it to sign, so. Okay. Joyce, you okay with you? I think I've got fine. Okay. Okay. New business, right of first refusal. 12 months, so I would have a, we should probably have a motion to approve the. Um. I'll make a motion to approve the lease. The, um, the lease terms as written. With uh, 12 months, uh, 1600 annual, Four and the rest quarter. as written. Yeah. Four and a quarter. Motion. Okay, second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, aye. I feel badly, we should have moved you guys up. It just dawned on me now. And here I thought you guys were just fascinated by this conversation. It's all right. Someone's getting paid by the hour, so that's good. <laughs> well, for one of them it is. Me too. I should wait, I'm not. All right. Uh, this is the Master in Law Chapter 61A, right of first refusal to review and vote on whether to waive a right of first re refusal for land located at 134 Christian Lane Owned by this. This is that's not these guys. That's not. That is, uh, do the other, let's do the other one first. Some other party. Uh, well, you got I'm this confused, one. I guess. So I get this one on the agenda. We're just a matter of the second one on the agenda. There. Do we agree yeah, or not? We're, we're, you you we're already brought it up. I, I I don't know what I'm talking about yet, so I'm not gonna. I'm, hey. well, Brian, where yeah. are we going? Quickly. All right, 134 that's Christian that's Lane. That's that is the parcel, that's the Cocot parcel that Nexamp is currently building a solar array on. That's been fenced off and the driveway's made. Right. And yeah, right. uh, apparently they- put nice shops and stuff like back there. They realized that they never came to the board and requested um, the town waive its right of first refusal. So here they are. Well, not here- coming out of 61. Yes. Yes. And I believe they've, uh, my friend, I believe they've already paid the rollback taxes on yes. that. Yes, yes. Well, fine. Conservation Commission deferred to the Ag Commission, and I, I didn't hear anything from the Ag Commission. Okay, so I would make a motion to um, waive the right of first refusal by the town. Okay, second. Second. Okay, Joyce. Second. All those, all those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me. Aye. All right. So now is this B? Yep. Another Mass General Law 61A, right of first refusal to review and vote on whether to waive a right of first refusal for land located off North Street, parcel 25-2-0-02. I know you love maps, don't you? Very much. I have no idea what I'm looking at here. North Road. Uh, yeah. This so, is your house. So this is my house here. So this is the, oh yeah, the Swamp Road, okay. We got a map in here too. Well, Chester Road, last time. It's the Belder. This is Belder, Belder Farm. And this is Sanderson. Sanderson, yeah. And, and just to clarify, it's eight acres only of the, like, the larger parcel. Yeah. Is the request. Why are you pulling it out? Oh, uh, for a solar array. And, and so. I've heard of this solar stuff. I, it must be great. <laughs> well, well, so it's kind of a win win for everybody, right? You get a. You get more taxes, more revenue for the town. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Robleski, it's his property. Uh, he gets revenue from working with the solar developer. The developer gets a little benefit and uh, there's clean energy for, I believe what is proposed will end up powering about 112 homes. Uh, it'll be 750 kilowatts, oh, so it's quite small. I've got a, a map of the array here, if you guys would like to see it. Have, um, we, have we talked with the abutters? Not yet. So this is, there's a few different pieces that we've got to go through. First, um, and this is, uh, I'm Scott Raymer. Good evening, nice to meet you guys. I work with a group called Hexagon Energy. Uh, we will talk to the abutters. That's part of our, our planning board process. But before going through the planning board, we like to try and, uh, and go through the right of first refusal first. Just There's a few different concurrent pieces for, for getting these projects done. 
um, you know, conservation commission, planning board, zoning board of appeals, select board, and each step, it's, it's not an insignificant process to, uh, to get these things permitted and going through and making sure that the town would not, would not have an, a problem with uh, not exercising the right of first refusal is just really the first step that, that we're just taking in this. So here's a, here's a layout. And this is your attorney. Yes, sir. And, and forgive me, I, in all of the discussion earlier, I forgot to introduce myself. My name's Nate Tripp. I'm an attorney in Greenfield. I work with attorney Gary Gruber. He's been around a little longer than me. But, uh, yeah. yeah. We, so it's a, it's a 750 kilowatt AC array that uh, is designed um, to, to fit within all of the, the zoning bylaws of the town. Um, power approximately 110 homes, um, and Eversource would be the uh, the purchaser of the energy under the upcoming Smart Program. Um, and so we we've, we've entered into a, an option to lease the property for Mr. Robleski, um, just requesting that the uh, the board um, agree to not exercise the right of first refusal, so we can go ahead and put our, our formal plans together, interact with the abutters, um, and and move forward with the planning board and conservation commission. Joyce, we're looking at a map here uh, that, that has, because I'm assuming you don't have it. No, she did get some. I think she's in the packet right now. Oh, you did? Oh, OK. There, there was an initial sure. submitted with the first letter that I had submitted. Okay. And then I believe what you got is a little bit more of a fine-tuned map for the location. What's the setback on this? Setback from the property line is only about 35 no, feet. No, from the road. From the road is whatever the width of the AR1 um, area is. That's the red line that's shown there. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I have no idea how much that you said it's 100 feet. 100 feet. Okay. okay. So we're, we're set back behind that to make sure we're in an area that would be allowed. And then is this the woods or is this more field? So that's um, that's woods and wetland. It's bordering vegetated wetland, vegetative wetland, and also the, the river runs through there. And there's some sensitive habitat um, for NAGSP. And so we, we work to try and, and the green that you see is also the, the wetlands and then a 10 foot offset that we've had an informal conversation with the, uh, with the Conservation Commission about to make sure that we're, we're offset from any um, trenches and any uh, ditches that are dug there. So we, we've conformed to the wetlands as uh, wetlands offsets so far, but we'll be going through the, uh, the RDA or notice of intent process with the Conservation Commission upcoming soon. So this is the final one, because other, other maps show different arrangements, but this is the one you're going with because... Correct. Yes. The, the only change with the there may be a, another access road along the northern portion off of um, off of North Street there because there's no other way to access connect the sites uh, because of the trenches uh, and we, we didn't want to have to build a bridge across the, the different trenches. And okay, which site would, would that be up here? Why that would, would be there. access this one then. There's a, there's a connecting point, an existing access road through here already that you just can't see on this. We'll have more formal. Uh, plans made soon. So like this little area like mm -hmm. this one. Maybe. Exactly, exactly. Um, that that is existing access, so we'll, we'll be able to drive through there. So it'll be it'll be approximately right here. Right in there. That they will connect to uh, North Street for the second access. And I walk past here a fair amount. This isn't land that's used for any agricultural purpose right now. Is it Haiti? It is Haiti. Do you hay? The name Belder rents it. Oh, he does rent it. Yeah, well, he calls the hay. Yeah. Okay. I, that, I I missed that even. I just it looks like it's just okay. Um. Is he gonna miss the hay? Well, he's still gonna have plenty there. Okay. So you you'll miss some. Okay. Have you have you talked with them about this? No, not yet. Well, I I mentioned it. <clears throat> you know, a year ago or so. Okay. Right. okay um, I have, you know. So I notify, <clears throat> according to our APR policy that we have, we notify the Conservation Commission and the Ag Commission when we get applications like this, and the Conservation Commission had no, um, no problem with the, with the select board. Way to the right, and, and the I, ad I never hear back. I've yet to hear back from the ad commission on any of these. Considering that's the neighbor. Okay. All right. So if you want, to, if we agree with the right of first refusal, 
I, I'll make a motion to um, waive the right of first refusal. Second. Ms. Fortune? I'm still trying to figure out which parcel on this paper map is the one they're talking about. Um, you see five. You see five. Yeah, the map's up here, and it, uh, I know she's it's got uh, this one in the house. Oh, she's got that. Yeah, it's uh, in our agenda. There are two of them. One's the 134 Christian Lane, but we're not talking about that, right? No, we're, we're talking about North about Street. The one that's off North Street. Exhibit B. Chestnut, right? But uh, it was because North Street was raining Chestnut, uh, North Chestnut Plain Road. But parcel ID, this map looks a heck of a lot like the intersection of Chestnut Plain and Haydenville Road, which is not North Street. Not yet. So the map I'm looking at, I don't know if I'm looking at the right map. Joyce, look at, do you have something that says Exhibit B on it? Exhibit C. Juniper Solar Initial Visual. Yes. Okay, that's the one. Juniper Solar Initial Visualization for Weightless Select Board. But that's not on Chestnut, that's not on North Street. That's on Chestnut Plain Road. No, that's North Street. No. Exhibit B is off of North Street. Well, because I work on the... The, map. the lower it, right corner, that that solid uh, uh, black line, that's that's North Street. On Exhibit uh, B. Exhibit B, right? On the, the lower left corner, that diagonal black line is North Street. Joyce, does your Exhibit B say Juniper Solar Initial Visualization? On the top. It doesn't say anything at the top. Oh. No. no, the little box uh, under the top. It says Waitley Assessor's Map 39, and it shows the town hall and the adjacent building. No, that's oh. that's that's part of the preservation restriction. Keep going. You keep going and you pack it. Because then now to exhibit D. Yep, keep exhibit going. Exhibit E, and now town hall use policy. Yep, keep if you keep on. scrolling through that. Oh, on the other side of the town, I'll use policy. Okay. Yeah. Completely in the wrong part of the package. You need a guide for the packet. I need a guide for the Note packet. to Brian, it's too long a packet. Okay. Now I see it's the first one. Well, well, the meeting minutes were only for 20 car. something pages. So. I know. If we, stop having, if we stop having public hearings, we'll be all set. Okay. Understood. I was the answer to the question. All right. Fred. Yes. Me, yes. Okay. Thank you. You guys win. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. And uh, it, it will be something that provides a pilot payment to the town as well. Um, we will count on that. We'll have further conversation, but we're, we're excited to work with you guys and bring some income there. So Joyce, you're on again, I think. C Cynthia already right. sent me a rollback taxes. Yeah, she already gave me a number. She already yeah. gave me a number. So. Yeah, we like money here. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, nice to see you guys. Um, so we still, we we don't. Do you? We won't have a notarize tonight. So okay. Okay. Um, we'll let you know when it's. We should. I don't think it was a notary here. We've had some staff changes. I am. You are. Mm -hmm. We can pick it up tomorrow then. What'd you do wrong? Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you, Lee. Charge. That's so sweet. You gonna charge us? All right. Um, I would make note that we will. It's not on the agenda, unless it's on the back. Oh, there's a page two. Oh yeah. Oh, there. Okay, never mind. I won't jump ahead. Six C. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't see. That's the list that Lynn gave me. She had to update it. Appointment of election officials. I will read them out because it's a relatively short list. Our election officials from September 2018 through August 2019. I will not give people party affiliation, but they are evenly distributed between Republican, Democrat, and unenrolled. Virginia Alice, Carol Annis, Fred Barron, Susan Barron. Patricia Brashensky, Elaine Cooper, John Cooper, Suzanne Sis, Jeff DeRose, K. 
Catherine Florial, Jane Gripko, Constance Ludlum, Meredith Morrison, Sylvia Nye, Elizabeth Orlowski, Perfido, uh, <laughs> say that one. Darn it. Nicole P Pikeowitz. Petra Skevich. Petra Skevich. My apologies. Roberta Reardon, James Ross, Marianne Sadowski, Beverly Sanderson, Sanderson, Randy Sibley, Marianne Simon, Donna Wiley, Larry Ashman. Uh, we already had Elizabeth Orlowski Porfido stated before, and Brianna Taylor. I would make a motion to appoint those individuals as elected election officials from September 2018 through August 2019. Second. Fred. Aye. Joyce. Yay. Aye. Okay. We are very sorry to, um, well, we're sorry and pleased all at the same time. Um, we will accept with regret the resignation of Fran Fortino. No, no, no. Barbara, Barbara Bannock. Barbara Bannock. Oh, geez. Barbara Bannock, sorry. We want Fran to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Fran. I was like, I just saw him. Why didn't he say anything? Um, for Barbara Bannock, who is the most wonderful person you would ever imagine, by the way, uh, for those of you who don't know her, um, we will accept her resignation from the Board of Health, and uh, I will make a motion to appoint Rebecca Jones uh, to replace Barbara Bannock on the Board of Health. Second. All those in favor? Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me, aye. All right. Um, cemetery stone restoration. We're reviewing bids and awarding contracts to lowest responsible and responsive bidder. We're reviewing a con we're reviewing a bid. <laughs> um, the bid we received was from Gravestone Services of New England. That's the same company who has done two previous uh, restoration phases in the um, Center Cemetery and a little bit in East Waitley Cemetery, I believe. Um, and the recommendation from the cemetery commissioners is that this be awarded. I have a question. Yes. And Brian, I brought this up with you back in probably February. Yep. I have heard through direct contact that we are not doing a very good job of publicizing this type of work to the world of gravestone restorers and so I'm wondering it was if it I remember I remember some emails about uh, some person that we had, that you had some contact with I believe in Chesterfield yeah well uh, Chesterfield or it was a hill town um she and I had her email address and I sent her the bid package and I didn't Okay. Um, I made sure to, to send it to that individual. Um, and Her point was that this is expensive and it's out of region. And again, yeah. uh, are we not publicizing adequately? But if you sent this to her yes, I did. and you didn't get a kickback on an email, so we're assuming she received it. Yep. Why are we only getting one bid? Is this such a rare... I, I don't know enough about this line of work. What, what have we spent already? We had, what, two contracts already on this? It's CPA funds, I believe it was, yeah, two, they, this is phase three uh, of that work. I, I don't know what the... And this is CPA funds? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure we're spending money responsibly. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I would rely on Darcy. Yeah, no, she's great. Well They're great. To, so. Okay. So this was approved for CPA at, at town meeting? Yeah. To the amount of $30,000? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and do I hear a motion to accept this bid per the recommendation of the cemetery commissioners? Sure, so moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Yay. Fred? Aye. 
me, I. All right, Brian, you have had a month since our last meeting, so I can't imagine there should be a lot of unforeseen you updates. You can imagine there's a ton. Yeah. And unless you're using the definition of unforeseen a little too uh, generously. Can you skip the administrator updates? That's what we're doing now. Oh. Your favorite part. I know that's what you say for. Mm. Anyway, go ahead. All right. So um, we'll be advertising for the custodian position hopefully next week. We budgeted for six hours per week, um, but it's time that we fill that position because um, it's budgeted for and now we have the town hall for where where would that person work um well it's i think what we've talked about this would be this building um town hall and then i'm not sure what other buildings it would be needed for regular cleaning will be needed for um we could we could talk to keith and see if there's some need there um what that that's i guess that's still six hours or whatever we yeah. six hours is what's budgeted i guess we could talk a little bit more about where that should be focused but what, what does the library have the library has the custodian i want to say two hours a week two hours i don't know if that's true or not what stuck in my head six hours a week we don't need to put that that's going to be a low dollar amount we don't need to put that up to bid do we no this this would be um the idea is that what well what we originally talked about was was seeing if the library and custodian wanted to take on additional hours or maybe somebody from the school wanted to take on additional hours or the custodian at hurley brian noise who does a great job at hurley yep um, I think we should send it to him too. Send it to him too. And if we have more than one person interested or group interested, we have to cross that bridge when we come to it. But but he does a he does a very good job. Yeah. I think the library person was interested a while ago. Yeah. Can mention that. Yeah. To you. Yeah. So so we'll see that posted and we'll share that with okay. those, with those folks. Um, Update on the emergency generator at the Whaley Elementary School. I did get the final cost estimate for the installation from, from Mark Boussier, Boussier, Boussier. Um, it was right around 21,000 for the installation. Um, I guess the, the biggest part of that is, is, is some transfer switch or some type of equipment that's expensive. I don't know much about this stuff, but um, that, so that means the total project cost will be around just over thirty-six thousand. We have fifty-eight thousand money allocated. So uh, we talked last. We were gonna we were gonna move this project forward if we could fit it within the budget, and we can. So yeah, um, okay. we'll move that forward. And can we use the remaining budget as a as a fund to pay fuel charges that we're going to incur for the generator? Yes. Maybe. There was mention at the school committee that they were going to put it in a building, which I'm not I, gonna, I haven't heard about. Well, it needs to vent. Hmm? Do you mean the no, generator? We're talking about constructing a shed for it. I had not heard of that. Yeah, I'm just telling you. That was at the last school committee meeting. Well, that's it's enough. Well, yes. but this. It's got to have a pad, and they were talking about a shed. It certainly needs a pad. Yeah. Uh, but the whole generator is self-contained. No, no, I understand. I'm just so, telling you what the new yeah. principal. Uh, new we want to have some oversight over that. I, 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 I think we'll have complete oversight over that. Good. And that money is what town money? That's money that was. Uh, it was appropriated. Well, a long time ago. Four or five years ago, maybe. It was town funds, so it'll go back to our yeah. general yeah. account. Okay. Yeah. We didn't yeah. spend it. Okay. Um, I sent out earlier this week that economic development report from Jessica Atwood at FERCOG. Do you want me to post that on the web? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, I don't know just much to talk about at this point, but. You know, I, I, I looked at it and yeah, it looks like a good report, but looking how many people were there, I think uh, the select board was there and 
I counted maybe uh, six other people there. Uh, and I guess there were some good outcomes come out of that, or recommendations, but I don't know if that truly represents the town. When you have uh, 10 people at a, at a meeting like that, although they were all invited, uh, and I don't know where that's going to lead. It's some of the recommendations to use it to update to master plan certain chapters of a master plan. Uh, I don't know how that would be used. Whether do we rely on the ten people that came to that session to represent the interests of the of the town for that or not? We've had special town meetings that numbered about I ten, know. and we've made some pretty important votes there. Yeah. Or do we bring it up again? I know their contract is ended probably to do it. Their work is ended. Do we bring it up at a, another meeting? It's always a challenge to get I mean, if come talk about things that they don't think directly impacts them. Yeah, you know, or if we have these uh, information meetings in the future for water district or, or some other thing, always bring it up then. I, I don't know if you'd get any more interest in it or not, but uh, yeah, I realized what everybody's saying that, yeah, we invited them and, and it was scheduled and, and that's all that showed up. It, it's inevitably, I inevitably people will say, oh, I didn't know about it. Yeah, well, I know. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, I think we go forward with, with whatever happened, and, and, it, and if people have a beef, it's a lesson learned that they got to participate or else they don't get a voice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know that sounds harsh. Yeah. So, should we move on? Joyce, what do you have to say? Well, I was one of those people at the right. meeting, so right. I, I don't. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not sure that the point of the meeting was was to necessarily represent all of the town. It wasn't really a legislative body, but it was just looking at what people think the vision is, and, and you know those are the people that will show up. So I guess I'm less concerned about it as far as just you know having this document and, and putting it out there. I'd be really interested in people getting uh, getting some feedback from people whether they were there or not. On, uh, on the ideas we talked about. Uh, what about putting it up for public comment? Just feedback, please. Yeah. We're not going to necessarily, I mean, yeah, feedback. What's wrong with feedback? Yeah. Yeah, I'd go along with that if you want to ask anybody. Ask two, two week window for feedback. Let's see what we get. I mean, like, what do we have to do with this, like, next step on this document? No. I don't think we have to do anything immediately, right? No, no. Uh, there was, I guess, yeah. other than uh, the three recommendations, and uh, there weren't anything really new other than, like I say, updating our master plan with this information. But whoever or whoever or whenever that gets done. Well, updating my master plan would be a town meeting discussion, I would imagine. Then we could just say this was the recommendation of a regional economic development. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, charrette that was done, and so I think we just put it up for public opinion, public comment, public comment. Okay. and review, and revisit it when we are ready to take action. Yeah, what else, Brian? That's fine with me. Uh, so the um, the bids for the the manganese filtration project came in today and they came in high um, the town has the town has uh, four hundred thousand dollars available from the, the Clinton Water Trust the low bidder came in at four hundred fifty four thousand that doesn't include contingency so there's a significant gap Ooh. in the available funds that we have through the Clean Water Trust and what we would need to complete the project if we were to accept um, the low bid. Um, How many bids did we get? We got <clears throat> four. So it's not like there wasn't 
interest in the project. The high bid was $100,000 more than that. So it, it came in high. Um, so I'll be having a discussion fairly soon with um, Mass DEP and I'll include uh, Wayne from the from the Water Department as to what their recommendations would be in terms of either how we fit this in with the money we have, or additional funding possibilities, or uh, at somehow somehow we need to figure out path forward. So, or we could just re put it out for rebid. We could put it out for rebid. Yeah, we'll have to be we'll put out that generator. Now we got this other one. How, how long ago was the 400 Clean Water Trust money estimated or granted? Was that recent, recent or is that three years ago and the costs have gone up so since then? What, what's the um, time we got that? I don't, I don't know when that, when that was authorized. It can't have been three years ago. My guess is a year, maybe 18 months. Can we go back to them and ask since? That's one of the questions I'll have for Mass. Mass DEP works with. If we can increase that because of inflation or whatever. Yeah, one of the things we will we would need to do is, and this comes at the last thing that I want to ask you guys about, but we would need our funding authorization for from town meeting is limited to four hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Um, so I, I the bid we got the bids today. I wanted to let you know, and I don't have a solution yet, but we'll be. Trying okay. to figure something out. How long are they good for? Um, tip, uh, Thirty days. Um, you can obviously, if they want the work, they're going to agree to hold it open longer. Um, but that's something. Where did the four hundred thousand come from? Is that a grant or is that our town taxes? That's a loan. That's a loan from the Clean from the Clean Water Trust. That is to be paid back through the enterprise fund. Through the enterprise fund. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's find out what's possible in terms of more money, but I, I'm inclined to reject all the bids. If right. And, and maybe there's ways we can. Well, one of the constraints we have is we're using clean water trust funds, and they have requirements about. Um, engineers and general contractors and those types of things which make the project more expensive. So, but, well, but, but clearly there, there was a discrepancy of $100,000 between low bid and high bid. So there is wiggle room somewhere and... There appears to be wiggle room up, but... Yeah, you well, take a chance with a um, going to go down. And I, I think most projects I've seen where they you rebid, you either change the scope of work or prices would go up. Wait, wasn't this a custom designed system? Wasn't that this whole, I thought we were with one outfit that was custom designed and this filtration? Yeah, I'm not sure. It may possibly. I, mean, I just wonder if they're all bidding on this custom design. I mean, I'm guessing they are. Yeah. Okay. Let's go find out what our options are first. Right. What um, else? And in terms of that, I'm, it's probably, I think we have a, a, a critical mass of stuff to, to hold a special town meeting, um, especially if something's going to need to be done with, possibly something needs to be done with, with, with this project as well. Um, hopefully we can do that. I was thinking at the end of October, we had talked about not meeting on the 31st. I'm wondering if, if, if the board has availability on October 24th. We could hold a special town meeting and then hold the select board meeting after. That's a Wednesday. Or else we could explore other dates. So what would we, what would the agenda other than decide? For, for special town meetings? Yes. Um, I should have brought my folder. Um, some financial cleanup stuff. Um, Free cash will be done on it. Free cash would be potentially potentially certified by then. I'll get I, I I'll get you the list, Fred. I don't have it. Okay. I don't have it here, but I think there's I think I probably have seven or eight items. Nothing 
earth shattering, but yeah. nonetheless that have been put off for a little while now. Okay. So who initiates this new zoning scenario for the blue school? Does the owner initiate that? He can. No, I didn't know if the town had to initiate it or that was owner, I believe an owner of a property can petition for their property to be rezoned. What would you have to be zoned for? It's already residential. Yeah, but not not that many units. Oh, multi-UPM. Limited, limited okay. to four units, yeah. I think. Well, the building inspector wouldn't give my a building permit for more than four right now, so. So we'd have to get a variance or change the zoning from the town before they well, give it was the one that, um, permit. Brian had mentioned the, through the state. He's going for 10 units. Well, that's the other option is the low income one with the no, 40, no, 40 no, B requirement. No, that was a separate one. This is... Uh, Look, other towns have adopted what's called adaptive reuse overlay district. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's, that's, that's a, uh, it's a, it's an overlay district which sounded like the direction he wanted to go versus 40B. It would be the path of least resistance, assuming that the town supports it. But it's a zoning, a zoning change. Yeah, the, so it would be two um, thirds vote of, uh, of the residents at, at, right. at the town meeting. But again, look, and who, in your opinion, initiates that? If he's, if he's about to sign, I'm sure he's gonna to wanna to start that. Um, there's a list of eligible entities or individuals in Chapter 48 the select board, it could be his own board of appeals, it could be the planning board, it could be the property owner. Okay. I believe those are for a petition of signed by a hundred residents, I think, could, could force the board to call a special town meeting. Um, so he's we, probably aware of this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we think this is possible for October 24th? I can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine for that day. Okay. So I'll have a warrant for the board to sign. That would be where here? At our next meeting. Where would that? We're having it. We could have it here. Town Hall? <laughs> Whatever <laughs> you want to do. <laughs> start I like sometime. that idea personally. Let's start sometime. <laughs> so we'll, we'd want to do the special town meeting at um, 6? And then so that's like meeting seven. immediately after. Yeah. Okay, what do we do? Spend time. Oh, so yeah. Is it be big, it can it be, if it's a short agenda, well, let's do the select thing. board first and then town meeting at seven. That's the way we normally do it. A short agenda for which one? <laughs> Either select one. Board. Yeah. Town meeting at seven? Yeah. Select board at six? Yeah. Okay. Are we on meeting dates or do you have other stuff still? Um, we need members to join the cultural, cultural council. council. We need members for a lot of things. We need members for the rec commission, is that true? Um, or no? Yes, we are looking for people who would like to become involved with the rec commission. We really are looking for people who want to become involved with the rec commission who have young children and you have to unfortunately be a resident of Waitley you cannot be a school choice parent um, but it would be wonderful if we got some people involved because there are we need we need we need some 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 new blood with, with young children and it's really important if we want to see we have a very successful rec program in this town uh, but the only way to continue that is to have uh, people who have young children getting involved so that they can guarantee that their children will have as good an experience as children like mine have had over the past six years, seven years, eight years, however long it's been. Um, and then Cultural Council, we need at least two members. Good. I, I think I we need at least one, but yeah, we have, we could take, we could have two. I'll just say something, I, I, yeah, I agree, we, we there's, these two plus other other committees that that aren't fully staffed with, with volunteers. And I, I guess I made a comment a while ago that 
we should upgrade the the description of, of all these committees on our website. You know, I, I have no idea what Rec Commission does. You mentioned something here, but that doesn't register me as saying why I want to be on Rec Commission or what does a Rec Commission do. Uh, not only picking on, on Rec Commission, but other committees. Yeah, the other on our website members, but and members are listed, but don't say what they do, what they're responsible for, how often they meet, what do they look at, what's their interaction with the town, what do they do for the town. I, I think we need. We need to upgrade that information on there. Maybe that, that's something that maybe Amy or, or Janet could do. I brought it up a while ago. A while ago, the, you know, the, the housing committee did that a year ago, because I'm always on the housing committee. We said a one-page thing of, of our objectives, our goals, and some activity duties or activities that we're, we're involved in. If you put that on for each committee, maybe you want to standardize it, look at what's on there today, and maybe look at other communities, what, are, what are other towns have for, for their list. And, and I think it gives people an idea, well, what is the committee about? Maybe you'll get more volunteers, Jonathan, maybe not. I don't know, but at least I don't know what some of the committees even do. I remember when I first got on the board a long time ago, I volunteered, volunteered to be uh, a, a field driver and fence viewer. Yeah. I had no idea what that yeah. was. I'm still really kind of yeah, in the dark. I still don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> and a weights and measurer person. What does that keeper of the pound do? I, well, that's not a committee, but that's a right. appointed He's person. Very busy yeah, he does. Right. But, so, but I think, you it, know. It's a fair point. I, I just worry that, well, is it going to happen? But the request out to these committees that well, we'd like I, to do I, that. I, I guarantee you that. Committees that are that are understaffed with volunteers now are not going, and they can barely keep their head above water with the day to day. Are going to write up? We can barely get the committees to write up the annual report. Back I know. Page page. Well, and see what you get. I, I guess. But my concern is that you're going to start to see, and you're seeing with the cultural council resignations. And if we don't fill the cultural council spots, we run the risk of losing our cultural council funding from the state. And that's the reality, and, and that does things like Watermelon Wednesdays and a lot of cool things. And, by the way, could be doing some amazingly great things in the new town hall and that cultural... Okay, but, but is what you just said, Jonathan, is that on a website somewhere for people to know. see, to know what this committee does and, and to get them interested in joining or going to a meeting to see about it? How, how do you do that? I don't know. That's just my thought of. I mean, it's a fair point. I just am trying to think about who has the capacity to do that. Right. I think for the yeah. cultural council right now, the most urgent need is a chair. Um, yeah. And that's, uh, you know, it's because Larry has been the chair and he's uh, term limited out at this point. Um, so, and, and I think that the main thing that the, the chair has done, uh, and, and treasurer, usually the chair is also the treasurer because you're uh, fixing up payments, you know, for things that we approved, people bring, you know, send in their receipts and documentation, and then we, we uh, send it on to get them paid. Uh, that's really the critical thing at the moment. Uh, there's, if we only replace one member, will still be okay, um, but we, we really need someone who can be the chair. And I don't, I don't think it's the important time for that because that's when you do all your meetings and uh, decide on the funding for the following year. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the Cultural Council is a big lift in terms of as volunteer positions in town go. I don't, um, I don't, Joyce, yeah. am I, I wrong? Did. Choices on the cultural uh, council. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on the cultural council. Uh, as these things go, there's a couple of meetings. You have to read through some applications. Um, you yeah, get to help rank them and decide how much money to give to who. So your job is to give away money. That's cool. You make friends. Uh, and you make friends. So this would be especially good for someone who's new to town. Um, uh, when Neil Abram first moved to town, I put him up for cultural council. And so I know he's already done uh, a, a, a term or two of that and got term limited out. Um, yeah, but there's limits. people out there so living in the town and you want to just meet some people and find out more about what's going on. 
um, that would be a really easy way. You know, you get a few meetings in the fall, um, and then there's a bit of paper handling uh, through the spring and summer as people send in their receipts for the things they need to get reimbursed for. So get back to, I guess, my recommendation. I, I, I'd recommend that we, we at least start this and, and ask these committees to update their their website, uh, their their article on the website, and see what we get. I mean, if the one if if they don't want to do it, we'll try another approach to get them to do something. But I think not doing anything isn't helping us. We can put out the request. I think, I, I yeah, think we're not getting any more by just sitting here waiting. Yeah. Okay. We'll put out the request. Uh, and whoever you guys you guys have constant communication. I mean, I know that communication goes out with, with the the finance. Uh, pieces on a monthly basis so all right what else you know the energy committee could put should have probably sold you guys we've got that 10 acre field that we share with your field and there's you know, a three phase power right to it crosses this 91 and goes over to the diner at the oh yeah yeah well, we also have the, the old landfill. Uh, you don't you don't want to touch that. Trust me. Sure, you do. It's Other not, towns do it. It's not ten. Well, I know, so but we didn't cap it right. It probably cost us so much to recap it. Why didn't we cap it right? Is it the same kind of thing as we didn't know the boundary lines of Hurley? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, good. Probably the same. Of course, we capped it right. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I have a. I have a. Um, Meeting dates. September 26th is not an option for me. We need you. I know. So I'm thinking the 25th. No, I'm not available. Well, he, we'll keep both of you. And Brian's got another meeting on the 25th already. So. Well, I can't do the 27th or the 26th. Where 25th. September? No, I can't. I can't do that. Earlier that week. Oh, you can't. Thursday or Friday of that week. Well, Thursday. When did we say town meeting was going to be? The 24th? Yeah. October 3rd? You want to move it to that Wednesday? Well, you could do the 3rd and then the 17th. Well, we do the 3rd and the 24th because that's when, right? Town meeting. Oh, I see. The 3rd and the 24th. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's do that. You know, speaking of, uh, I put the warrant. That's uh, sewer. Shit. I mean, uh, okay, the third double caps. Yeah. Okay. Deerfield's had an outfit approach them to, to do their dump. They're coming in as the developer, and they're offering half the development rights to Deerfield. It's like an unheard of process. It's so, awesome. Just something to be. Apparently, there's a huge number. Of, the town doesn't see in the development right of these solar fields, like a million bucks. And they, stand, they sell the field off to somebody else. This outfit's approaching Deerfield as a joint partnership, and they're going to give them, offer them half the development rights, minus expenses. And then they will sell the field. They won't build it. They'll contract the field. It's just a, even these guys say that nobody's doing this. It's just something to think about, the energy people. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. All right, I'm gonna make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, aye.